now watch this right when I was here I knew that a day will come the blessed will call me blessed this was where the visions came I saw the nations from where I was I knew that a day would come the two leaf gates of nations will be opened I didn't know how but I knew that this was two riches the capital that buys influence the capital that buys relevance the capital that conquers the cosmos today I look at my life and all I can say is be glorified Galatians 1 24 has become a reality in my life and they glorified God in me I wish I had time for us to walk this this is just one of it I'm giving you alone do business without this you will only have a plethora of failed businesses while I was here the Holy Ghost came and said give me your mind follow me and I stupidly followed one step after the other he promised that the nations would open he promised that the blessed would call me blessed he promised I believed him watch this please go back you have one shirt and one trouser go to the boutique here go to the car stand here visit the airport here shake kings here build the church here when you build the church the Holy Ghost will start bringing them to you listen when he was teaching me I did not know you yet today he's brought us together the same way the clients that will lift you you do not yet know where they are look for them here they never get missing here South Africa is too large to find them one by one save yourself that stress I'm not saying marketing is wrong with respect to the mind and one day you will sit back and watch kings come they will queue up in front of your mall and you will say I have only heard that God lifts but now my life is a testimony when apostle was starting this ministry you were still in South Africa but you were not yet here he called you from the spirit here and today you are here even if you as big and large as you are you were still drawn by the power of the mind what will stop money from coming to you now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundant above all we ask or think I found the key here and so I went to the crusade here I healed the sick here I lifted the wheelchairs here I raised the dead here I experienced the ministry of the Holy Ghost here and inevitably I'm comforting someone so that after service you will run back home and say I found the key, found the key. they call you and say look let's try to I'm coming growth has already sorted me Let, let's try to lobby for a media interview is unnecessary there is a place in your growth where they will come running with cameras and say give us an opportunity to at least talk to you lay your hands on your mind and begin to prophesy in one minute decree and declare 
spirit of the living God breathe upon my mind let your word create the pictures of a future that is enviable take my eyes away from my background grant me access to light hallelujah praise the Lord God bless you our time is gone I can only give us one more oh dear you see why it takes time to grow many times when you are tired is proof that what is coming is not powerful because when the truth is powerful and is changing you your desire for more because you will be you would have been tired of wasting your time and you're saying look it's worth it instead of recycling one year of pain let me understand what i'm doing now true riches can i give you number two the second one that buys favor or buys buys money influence growth is called favor write it down the first thing i want to tell you please um whatever i share here just listen to them and 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 build on them and grow and um sometimes my teachings can be controversial but i say it with an open heart and to help you i'm saying that because of what i want to tell you favor is the next of the true riches that i want to teach you The major reason why we do not get favor in the body of Christ is because we teach that it is unmerited. <laughs> if I ask you, define favor, you say unmerited access. You are right, but you are wrong. Very wrong. Now, I said you are right because it depends on the context it was taught. It is the manifestation of favor that looks effortless. There is a science to favor first if it happened only once it is not favor it is breakthrough the proof that it is favor is that it must be repeated regardless the circumstances exodus chapter 3 verse 21 you will know right now whether or not favor is working in your life i want you to read it exodus 3 21 one two read please Uh huh. Emptiness has an explanation. It is proof that favor is not in your life. I will give you favor. Now, I don't have all the time to do detailed teachings on favor, but let me tell you this. Please look. The Bible says, I will give you favor in the sight. That means favor works with the power of sight. Notice every time the bible talks about favor the bible talks about the eyes when favor is on you real favor the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man provided they can see you that charm like manifestation is what the bible calls favor esther chapter 2 and verse 15 i'm rushing forgive me Esther 2 15 the last sentence Esther 2 15 from the last full stop ready to read one to read and Esther obtained favor in the of all them that looked upon her when the grace for favor is on you I'm passing and I look at you and suddenly the grace works the grace works the moment sight is true please believe me I know what I'm saying that you watch someone and suddenly there is an urge to give to sow and to do it with joy it's it's favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her if everybody who looks upon you in a day blesses you will you really be poor 
if everybody that looks at your business because favor can come on your business as an entity it can come on your ministry so someone is passing and doesn't know why he feels like just coming to sit down that is your deacon another person comes to sit down that is the greatest financier in your ministry favor favor makes men to exhibit magnetic properties it has nothing to do with your nationality it has nothing to do with gender has nothing to do with age these are spiritual realities that buy physical things verse 17 we're about to pray and the king look up please let me show you how real favor worked ready to read please read with me again and the king loved esther above hold on that's favor before esther came he or some other women were in the list but as soon as hadassah showed up he loved esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than if the king were looking at you and esther passed forget it it's over if they are looking at another business and yours passes it's over it's not about competition and fighting is these are systems of advantage in the kingdom this is the excellency of the supernatural life even the king and then favor always puts a royal crown on your head favor favor I think it's Proverbs 13 15 let's check it out if I'm wrong we'll just continue but I think it is Proverbs 13 and verse 15 read with me if you're a Christian one to read uh-huh leave that scripture there the Bible talks about two mothers pregnant with children the first mother is called good understanding and that she can be pregnant and the name of the child she gives birth to is called favor and that transgression a transgressor is not a sinner he's a violator of ordinances and principles you can even be a believer that a transgressor is also like a pregnant woman she can get pregnant and when she gives birth the name of her child is hardship hardship has an explanation that's why I told you favor is merited good understanding like you are having now there are systems when you engage you will program favor there are keys praise the Lord favor is very powerful show me the money that entered from your salary and show me the one that came from favor can you tell the difference in the afternoon when we were done I was about to enter the car and then I'm looking at this little girl and then suddenly I just love this little girl and I call her and I hug her why was it not you it's not because you are an adult <laughs> not necessarily Because in this conference, what I'm talking about must come upon you. Must come upon you. A man who looks at you every day and does not bless you, suddenly after this conference, you're on your way home. And he says, Are you the one looking for a job? You say yes he says have i attended to you the moment that happens just know you have obtained the capital that buys influence the capital that buys money listen the proof that favor is on you is not money the proof that favor is on you is the loyalty of men When I came in, I appreciate all of you for loving me so much. For many of you, I've not seen you. But what made you love me that much? This is what I want to come upon you. Amen. Apostle, it's because of the location of my business. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. He climbed the mountain and a crowd came. 
he went by the riverside and the crowd came please hear me because things will shift in your business things will shift in your life shift in your ministry favor favor parus favor is a real grace listen i took one month of my life to pray for favor i have not done you justice by teaching you all the principles that make for favor but there are but i will just tell you one as we wrap up it's called the esther anointing Esther chapter 2 again, please give us verse 15. Now, please listen to me. We're about to pray. Something must come upon you. There is a call because Vashti is thrown from the throne. And that call gets to Shushan. And they gather young virgins, prospective brides for the king and here comes this village girl from somewhere in south africa called hadassah and she's trying her chance mordecai encourages her watch this and then the bible says that now when the turn of esther the daughter of abihel the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go to see the king watch this she required nothing but what Haggai, who was playing the role of the Holy Spirit, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed. The Bible says, when you read the preceding verses, it says that he gave her oil. Go to 16. Oh dear, I think it was uh, maybe the 14 or so. There was an ointment that she rubbed for one year to see the king. Other women were learning how to walk, wonderful. Learning how to talk, wonderful. But Hagar said, I know the king. The spirit. No man knows the things of a man except the spirit of that man. Hagar said, I have walked with the king. I know what he wants. Let me give you a kind of oil that you will keep rubbing for one year when one year is done go to the king thou anointed my head with oil hold on but i know what is on my head by looking at my cup he does not anoint my cup my cup is a report card showing what is on my head Thou anointed my head with oil, my ministry run it over. Thou anointed my head with oil, my business run it over. Listen to me, what is on you is what controls what is around you. It is true. It is true. You can know what has come upon you by looking at the new experiences that are introduced into your space favor is powerful it is the number one reason we succeed in life you can have all the products and because we didn't have time to deal up on value and other things hopefully we may touch a bit on it as we wrap up tomorrow but let me tell you this i'm looking for what is applicable to everyone something you can go out with tonight and say i came to church without it but now i am returning with it that in one week by sunday next week you return back to church on your knees and say what is this what is this hallelujah please sit down listen i don't mean to brag but i can tell you my life is an unending wonder of what people do for me people have seen my account number in their dreams and have been instructed to continue to bless me for the rest of my life. I don't know them. People have called me and said, the Lord instructed us to make you a non-executive board member in our business. Your spiritual value is all we want. 
just give us your account number. I said, what is the meaning of this? I apologize if it looks like I'm bragging. Forgive me. My table is full of landed properties. I've never gone there to even see what is there. Three years ago, three kings came together and God just opened a door and they gave me 18.7 hectares of a gold mine. Listen, please hear me. I'm not here to psych you. There is a real grace that lifts men. Your man of God and his wife, the apostles and the men of God here, are testaments. Occultists know this. They continue to sell and do everything, but behind the scenes they know that it is what is on you that controls what is around you. Listen, in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. Hear me? I came into your city and I am humbled by the gifts and the seeds that people have brought already. It is not normal. And it is not because I am Apostle Joshua Selman. It is a grace on your life. Everybody who blesses you has relatives in need. Whatever makes him forget them and comes to you must be of God. Hear me? Everybody on earth is a giver. There's no such thing as stingy people. Right. They just feel you are not worthy to receive their seeds. They will refuse to give you 10,000 rands for something and yet bring 500,000 rands and tell someone else, let it be an honor to give you. They are, are they stingy? Greed is relative to the grace that it responds to. Because even Egyptians can give to the slaves. There is something that comes upon you when Pharaoh gives to you, you are really anointed. We have to pray. <sighs> hmm. South Africa, the Lord wants to shift us to new levels. Hear me, when God grants us access to these graces, sometimes as men of God, we mismanage these graces in pride. The goal is that it be distributed to the body. When he sends a word to Jacob, it's because he's looking at Israel. Many of you here are veterans in business. Many of you here are men and women of God, music artists, business people, politicians, and all kinds of great people. And like I said in the morning, I'm not here tonight to insult your pedigree. I know that you have sustained intelligence and I respect your experience. But can we, in addition to that which we have received, trust God tonight? Even in heaven, he said, come up hither. There is still room for more. Praise the Lord. And so I want to pray for you right now. We are going to pray. I taught you two things, your mind and favor. That success is not what you pursue, it's what you attract by who you are becoming. And that everything you are looking for is also looking for you. The assignment of conferences like this is to accelerate your meeting. Your house is in South Africa. Your land is looking for you. I'm here to help you find it. The donkey was also looking for Saul. Saul was looking. It was not just Saul that was missing or the donkey. As far as the donkey was concerned, Saul too was missing. Listen. Listen, 
your land has been asking when will you come your clients have been asking when will you come you think they are the ones who are delaying they are saying you are also delaying us your members are crying when will you call us my assignment tonight is to bring you together rise up on your feet Shalatasi Atakata Lift your voice and begin to pray. It's a new season, truly. What you are looking for is also looking for you. The level that you seek is also seeking for you. The anointing that you seek is also looking for you. Someone begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's a new season. House of Treasures. South Africa. It's a new season. You're about to access influence in the place of exchange. This I know. Western shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light hallelujah one more prayer point you're going to cry to the God of heaven it's time to shift Lord the grace for favor let it rest upon me here and now please lift your voice and pray the name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away let every other name fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Let every other name fade away Let every other name fade away Till there's only Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how we're going to do it. I thought I'll be able to pray for the sick this night. Because it's a final night. I know that our time is gone. I came with a heart to really shift you to a level supernatural dimension in the spirit come this fair man come yes i don't know what you do but you're about to step into a new dimension lift your voice i release that grace upon you you lift your hands you this one looking at me take that grace step into a new level in the name of jesus christ by the power of the Holy Ghost I want to pray for you now bring the lady that shouts now under the anointing loud to the hearing of everyone bring her we're rounding up 
The grace for favor is resting on you. I want to pray that grace. I don't know who you are, but in the name of Jesus, I shift you into new dimensions. Both of you, step into that level. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. That lady close to this man, lift your hands, my dear. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the Spirit. By the Spirit. New dimension. Now, I'm seeing a grace that is coming on business people. I'm seeing the number 35. I stretch my hands. Where are they? Right now, take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. I'm seeing the number 35. Let it fall on you right now. From the front to the back, the left to the right. Take that grace. I shift your business to a higher dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a man of God. You are a prophet. I may not call you out because of time. But I'm seeing a strong grace coming on you for the prophetic. Lord, where is that person? Let that grace rest upon you now. Let that grace rest now. Rest now. Bring them out. Rest now. Step into new dimensions. Our time is gone. Please bring them out quickly. I pray the grace for speed in the morning and the Lord is asking me to pray it again in the name of Jesus South Africa house of treasures I stand by the God of heaven and I prophesy take the grace for speed receive it now receive it now receive it help them please receive it now speed 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 Speed, no delay, a quick walk. Speed, lift your hands. This man, take that grace in the name of Jesus. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus. Speed, now listen. There is a grace that is coming on the women of South Africa. I want to pray. The grace that was on Deborah and the grace that was on Esther. There is an awakening. Women of power, visions. I'm seeing graces and mantles. Let it fall now. I stretch my hands. Deborah's arise. Esther's arise. I prophesy by the spirit of grace. An awakening of power. In the name of Jesus. Women of excellence. I empower you by the spirit. Rise in power. Do exploits. Rise in power. Do exploits. dimension my friend new level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing a gate in the realm of the spirit closed and the Lord is saying I should open it this is the gate representing the next level of someone's life right now in the name of Jesus I speak by the spirit let that gate be open now let that gate be open now in ministry be open now in business be open now career be open now Every man and woman of God in this place 
it's time for our ministries to shift to a level to shift to a level i stand by the spirit and i speak to you in the name of jesus the fire and the grace that comes upon you let it turn you into a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus take that grace in the name of jesus take that grace let it rest upon you i stretch my hands i don't know where the ministers are but i speak to you all over this congregation new dimensions new levels of power spiritual illumination understanding and insight in the name of jesus everything that has died in your life I speak to you by the Spirit of God. Talita Kumi, arise, arise, arise. Shika poka kosiata, embreketeka. Dead businesses, arise. Dead dreams, arise. Hallelujah. 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 Hear me there are many of you you would have been in certain dimensions now it says i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us i would have been in government by now but satan hindered us my business would have been global by now but satan hindered us in the name of jesus everything that has refused to be global i give it wings in the spirit rise beyond the limitation of your local environment rise beyond the limitation of your local environment be global be global be global in the name of jesus the bible says where you have been deserted so that no man goes through you i make you an eternal excellency the joy of many generations the grace for favor that opens you up to the ministry of men that opens you up to the loyalty of men in the name of Jesus I stand by the God of heaven and I declare take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I pray for your loved ones who are not here wherever they are around the globe may the angel of his presence locate them and see to it that this grace rests upon them too hear me all of you who are in the music ministry in the name of jesus i declare songs from the spirit rise to new levels in the spirit those of you who are in government i pray for you may this favor give you a ladder in this nation you will rise to the highest positions in the name of jesus let me speak over your finances he said by this time tomorrow and another foolish man stood and said even if God will open the windows of heaven he said blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance <gasps> South Africa I love you with all my heart and God loves you and it is his desire that in this season in the midst of what is happening around the nations he wants to isolate your nation and make a spectacle of wonder out of it a spectacle of wonder proof that god is alive proof of the excellency of knowing the holy spirit i speak over your finances i invoke upon you the mystery of divine supplies the raven that brought food for Elijah 
and fed him at Brook Cherry. I pray, experience prepared blessings. Experience prepared blessings. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Whatever you have lost, some of you have lost money. Some of you have lost relationships. Some of you have lost influence i pray like the hair of samson here at excel 2020 receive restoration now son of man can these bones live again and he said only thou knowest then he said prophesy i stand by the god of heaven and i command everything that has left your life that should not have gone return back now opportunities return back now favor return back now the final prayer point tonight hear me listen he said my son give me your heart my son not give me your money not your tithe and offering listen what makes us different from those who are prosperous in the world is our passion and our allegiance that it will never change that even though i rise financially i continue to love him that my prosperity will not make me a fool listen to me what we are advocating is not just resources that come and produce some carnal people who are irresponsible and no 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 this is not what we are advocating please do not confuse what we are teaching here we are people who are disciplined and responsible with a kingdom sense and 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 a vision for national transformation we are not some careless people just doing some religious jamboree our relevance spans beyond the church walls Are we together so it is important that i say this because what is on you now will work but let it not be that when you have built houses apostle That's right. and you have done everything you say my power and the might of my hand has given me this but thou shall remember that means you can forget thou shall remember i continue to tell the lord every level of influence and grace you grant me that will not let the nation see you in my life don't take me there it is a sincere prayer please hear this the blessing of the lord does not sponsor carelessness and childishness no we are disciplined people and if you are not adopt that philosophy let your life be disciplined enough to enter the palace of kings are we together don't allow money and prosperity and blessings just make us careless and sometimes we find ourselves doing a lot of things that justifies the accusations that are levied upon the body we are we are we are not people who are we are not a nuisance to society the concepts that we teach are not just some spiritual things for christians they are concepts that are universal in application because the same lord is rich unto all so we communicate concepts that can be adoptable by both believers and non-believers to the end that all of us lift and glorify the name of the Lord. I'm saying this so that we do not mistake all of these prophecies as an advocacy to promote lust. No. Your heart. It is true that we have received something that is of substance and it is true that it will speak in our lives. But remember, that God must be Alpha Omega not Alpha alone don't start with him and throw him somewhere to enjoy the fame he must be Lord all the way the Lord of your wealth the Lord of your influence the Lord of your excellence that when men look at you and say by what mystery do you command this result you are not ashamed to point them like an usher and say there is one greater than me when the spotlight is on you and it looks so enjoyable to not let them see him remember that in the midst of the lampstand the attention should be one who was the son of man the lampstands only attract you but the object 
we point the nations to his majesty i pray that our eyes be open light of the world you step down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that's the prayer start it again you're the light of the world you've stepped down into darkness pray it now open my eyes let me see one more time please sing with me you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me Hallelujah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to said the Spirit of the Lord I'm lifting you to new dimensions I'm lifting you I'm lifting you this is what the Spirit of God is doing the grace is lifting you lifting you new heights new levels I'm lifting you this is what I hear the Spirit of God saying listen let me teach you something about prophecy there are two dimensions to prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy the revelatory dimension of prophecy attempts to reveal to the end that your faith be built so you can receive it gives direction it strengthens your conviction but the highest level of prophecy is the creative dimension of prophecy where you make what has no business happening to happen when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened anyway he made it happen creation is the highest manifestation of the power of the holy spirit genesis 1 verse 1 says in the beginning god not from the beginning in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that means he was not in any of them and then the Bible says verse 2 now the earth was dark and void and formless the Hebrew word to who bohu chaos and confusion then the Bible says and the Spirit of God the master over darkness hovered round the face of the deep and then creation or recreation began to happen there is absolutely nothing God cannot change listen you have to find a way of believing in this conference that whilst you are seated you are running that whilst you are seated you are flying it is true it's not just some motivation from a man of God no 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 it is his divine power that gives us all things our faith only connects us to his divine power the real giver is his divine power it is able to give us all things that pertains unto life and godliness the Bible says but it comes through knowledge this is why we come to multiply the graces upon our lives through knowledge are we blessed Micah chapter 4 let's understand the cosmos let's deal with this system because this conference was so designed to supply spiritual intelligence to bring us to a point where 
we thoroughly understand the system that we're living in so that we can build an advantage to the end that the saints rise in light and to the end that the Christ be glorified. Never forget that the object behind everything we do is to see Christ revealed and to see Christ glorified. There must be a space in my rising, my lifting, my advancement for the revelation and the glorification of the Christ. Are we together? And the Bible tells us, remember, to be wise as serpents. Now he's teaching us how to live in the cosmos and he's saying you will need to borrow the philosophy of a serpent. Every time the Bible uses the word serpent in scripture, it always is linked to deception. It's always linked to the devil. But then most of the time, but now he's saying when it has to do with living in the cosmos, you will need to borrow the intelligence of the serpent. Are we blessed? So Micah chapter 4, let's start. Let's see where God will help us. It says, but in the last days, prophet Micah is speaking, it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people although it is upwards will flow to it this is a very very serious description now the bible says listen mountains in scripture generally talk about spheres of influence they talk about systems and structures are we together now now the cosmos was built twofold number one there is the earth the physical territory and then number two there is the sociological system that is made up of men please understand this and i hope you understand that man was and is the zenith of god's creation the apex of his artistry the object of his his creativity is man and the story of man is a long story i cannot begin to start it here we'll spend the whole day discussing the story because most men do not know that they're in the middle of an ancient story it says there was war in heaven are we together now john the revelator by the spirit caught in the isle of patmos he began to document the things that he was seeing and he said once upon a time there was an old story in the heavenlies that there was war one who the bible identifies as satan once upon a time the son of the morning and then the bible says that there was war even in heaven and that he attempted treason satan did not want to dethrone god he wanted to run a parallel government so that you could choose God or him it is still his system today everywhere he sees God he comes as the other option he doesn't necessarily want to replace he wants to be an equal option you have to understand this are we together and so the Bible says because if you do not understand man then you will not understand the cosmos and dominion will be impossible you see this conference is 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 really a very strategic teaching I'm, I'm just trying to create the foundation for us to understand the prophecy of micah and then deal with a few things and so the bible tells us that there was rebellion in heaven and satan was judged he contended with archangel michael and he could not prevail and a space was no longer found for him are we together now and then he was cast to the earth and there was a lamentation first there was joy in heaven but there was a lamentation woe to the inhabitants of the earth that satan that old serpent so he's not young anything old must be respected old money old ideas old enemies anything old has the advantage of experience listen carefully we're dealing with the cosmos here it is not to put fear it's just it's just an information 
that he's called an old serpent he's been cast to the earth so he's lamenting and saying hey earth, beware this guy is a master of treason and he's come within your domain the next time we hear about that old serpent he found his way through the system of earth to sit upon this mountain he was cast from earth as a failure but he utilized his experience to collect the keys of now began to build a system reflecting him remember earth was warned they said beware of this guy he's dangerous and the earth neglected that warning and by the time jesus comes satan says i have the keys look at the glory of the world whoever can fish himself through a system and become king there is a strategy there we must learn are you getting all that i've been saying so the bible says when you are wise be wise as serpents there is a secret of dominion a serpent has no hands and no legs yet you run away from it a serpent may not even run faster than you only one point of attack yet it is not threatened by any when a lion eats you see the evidence a serpent swallows and the digestion happens inside there are powerful you don't see serpents moving in twos i'm, I'm just giving you an idea please sit down so this cosmos we are living in listen carefully the bible says forever O lord thy word is settled he didn't say on earth he told you the domain where the word of god has entered its sabbath heaven but on earth there is still a contention and one day revelations 11 and verse 15 will become a reality that the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of we his Christ and then the prophecy of Daniel becomes a reality that he will reign forever and ever it's amazing that the book ends with the beginning of a new dispensation are we blessed but for now we are mandated having accepted Christ the advantage of his life in our lives the bible tells us that we must now understand the cosmos that not everybody is born again that not everybody subscribes to your ideologies and that you must sustain the intelligence to be able to live in the cosmos still succeed and glorify the name of the christ are we blessed so this will take a system of mentorship supplying us the various dimensions of information Micah in the last days he's given you an information that it shall come to pass that the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and that action will be so attractive the bible says people shall flow to it verse 2 it says they shall say unto one another come let us go up to the it started as the house of god the mountain of god now it says the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us this will be the advantage of that mountain they are privy to information that make for dominion come and show us the secrets he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for the law shall go forth from zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 prophet isaiah is buttressing on these revelations verse 1 he starts by saying arise isaiah 60 and verse 1 he says shine and he tells you why he says for thy light is come not your light is around just like faith light comet it can come to you the light has always been there but until it comes to you you cannot arise you don't arise because you are tired of sitting 
you arise because your light is come and then the bible says the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified puts it in a very interesting way he says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you he says rise to a new light rise the glory of the lord is risen upon you the next verse says for darkness now this is a pro this is this is very prophetic the bible is giving us an insider information so that we are not surprised it says a time will come in the age of of the church and in the dealings here in the cosmos that darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you oh i receive verse three hallelujah it says gentiles now here it is a time will come we'll stop looking for them there is a system that will be at work in us that will compel gentiles to come to thy light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of thy rising hallelujah praise the lord this is very very powerful darkness shall cover the earth gross darkness the people but upon you there is an advantage the advantage is light and that that light will one day compel the nations to come and see and acknowledge and when Sheba came to Solomon she did not come empty she came with gifts even though he was blessed because whoever possesses that light cannot be ignored within the context of a generation it is impossible neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel if the lamp is not lit no problem you can throw it anywhere but provided there is light it is impossible to hide light Put a cloth upon light you will still know there is light hide it in darkness you will still know there is light light cannot be hidden when jesus came teaching in his beatitudes he still began to teach and he said you are the light of the cosmos that means the definition of darkness is the world without you you are the light of the world you are akin to a city that is set on a hill it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bushel then it says you are the salt of the earth you are not the salt of the world you are the salt of the earth the powerful thing about salt is you can put it in food anytime there are ingredients that if you if you put it late you've messed up the whole meal but even when the food is done and is tasteless you can still do something about it are we blessed we are called light we are called salt now let's let's deal with let's deal with these things when i i gave us the illustration yesterday when jesus took satan up the mountain and showed him the glories of this world that means the glories of this world are hidden in the mountains are we together now let me begin to deal with micah's prophecy there is a location where you find the glories of the world the word glory is the hebrew word um cupboard am i right the greek is doxa and the original expression is the weightiness of a thing is an attempt to measure the worth of a thing so that when you want to know the worth of earth when you want to know the riches the vastness of the earth it tells you the location that the glories are residing within the mountains are we together now the glory the riches the influence now let me say one more thing before i begin to teach the gospel please look up the bible ties what we know to be the coming the end of the age you know rumors of wars and so on and so forth and um i may not argue with the fact that you know people teach that there are signs of the end times and the bible does recognize these things as signs but there is only one ultimate sign of the end time that the bible teaches us it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness 
to all the earth and then the end will come all of the things we call signs are beginnings of birth pains the bible says there is only one sign that the moment you see that the teaching of the kingdom the influence of the government of heaven begins to permeate systems and structures get ready because the dominion of the saints is about to be revealed and christ is coming as the king of we kings he's not coming for a weak church he's coming for a bride that is adorned are we are we together now these are very vital informations that must be it must be at the back of your mind as we explore dealing with the cosmos if not you will be distracted these are the things that peg your success and keep you at the level of balance because success without these understandings will distract you you will veer off there are too many options when you are blessed so this this information creates the coordinates so that the things that destroy others do not destroy you the bible says even fools can prosper the only advantage is that their prosperity will or their disadvantage is that their prosperity will destroy them and a fool is one who says in his heart there is no god that means he acts as though there is no god are we blessed we have to understand the system so the glories are hidden within the mountains whoever wants to access the glory of the earth must sustain the intelligence to ascend those mountains and find a space there now listen very carefully these mountains please can I have seven people just seven gentlemen just come stand here the mountains are called mind control systems please write them down please just stand at my, it's not an impartation oh dear <laughs> just, just please just stand you know every time I call for people like this they run they think I'm going to lay hands <laughs> seven of you are there seven okay thank you thank you now watch this watch this South Africa please watch this the Bible lets us know that the glories of the earth are hidden in the mountains are you following my, my discourse now that means if I can find and I told you mountains represent systems and structures of influence in fact um, let me digress a bit and talk about the gospel the word gospel means good news tidings that bring joy are we together now the Bible teaches us that there are two dimensions to the gospel please say two dimensions one more time say two dimensions there is the gospel as a message that saves that's the first dimension and sadly the only dimension that most of the church knows there is the gospel as a message what is the content of that message a revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son targeted towards that object of his love called man and then by extension creation to the end that believing that report we will have the life of God what John calls away do you agree that is the message of the gospel but there is the ideology of the gospel now this is the dimension that the church is ignorant of there is the gospel as a message and there is the gospel as a mind control system there is the gospel as an ideology the ideology of the gospel is the ideology that seeks to see and make Christ enthroned all across the cosmos it is the ideology if all you have is the message of the gospel you are saved but you are not safe because your territory the 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 message affects you alone it is the ideology that affects your cosmos please follow me we're dealing with something very serious here I have believed that message it profits me alone but there is something the ideology can do to my mind that is what will bring the cosmos under the influence of the Christ one more concept I defined and then we we'll begin to teach on this am I wasting your time let's talk about kingdom advancement I love you too thank you kingdom advance listen there is such a concept 
called kingdom advancement and i must teach you what it is what is kingdom advancement if you want to write please write this down kingdom advance is the deploying of every and any scriptural strategy the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that enthrones Christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities this is kingdom advance I repeat the deploying of any and every scriptural strategy that leads to the enthroning of the Christ first across the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activity South Africa please look at me it is not difficult to see Christ glorified if you understand this so when you say you are advancing the kingdom this is what you are saying I am an active contributor to seeing that the Lordship of the Christ be enthroned first in the hearts of men that's called evangelism second across the strata of human activities that's called influence so the key to kingdom advance is both evangelism and influence place it after me evangelism and then say influence for many years the church in africa and we're well-meaning people sincerely we have embraced evangelism and so we we are concerned with the the establishment of the lordship of the christ across the hearts of men and so we have sincere people morally sound they love god but the system is still under the control of a government that continues to frustrate and sabotage the progress of the church and so it, the remedy is a correct understanding of the gospel of the kingdom that it will take both evangelism and influence in that order not influence before evangelism no christ must be enthroned in our hearts then enthroned in our territory are we blessed are you following me now so kingdom advance and let me tell you this because i'm about to explain to us what we call purpose and explain to us what we call assignment or destiny we've complicated it with several teachings there is absolutely nothing complicated about purpose or assignment your purpose and assignment is simply the role you have to play in that universal agenda called kingdom advance we have been distributed roles to play and when you find your role the geography of your dominion the geography of your witness is called your assignment are we blessed so if all I have is Jesus in my heart I am happy but my children are in trouble your territory is in trouble someone will sign a policy one day that will completely sabotage everything you have built for kingdom come it was because Joseph had access to the king that God's covenant people were saved Jacob was a prophet but they would have still died it took a man of influence you've heard me say it for those of you who listen to my teachings the body of Jesus is hanging on a tree and no prayer warrior could bring it down it took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea who had access to government to negotiate the body of the Christ to come down he owned an estate that we called a tomb and that was where the body was dropped for your salvation look at the forces that played their roles don't just look at the cross alone the grave too played a role the tomb played a role otherwise we would not be able to say oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory so ministry therefore it's not just preaching it's not just teaching you begin to minister the day you find your place in this agenda 
the fivefold or fourfold as we argue really speaking are not ministers they are the gifts that prepare the ministers the bible says he gave gifts unto men ephesians 4 the gifts are not talents the gifts are men to men he gave men called gifts to men and the assignment of those gifts the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers it says for the perfecting the maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured by those gifts will do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry seeing to it that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ i will tell you why many people pray god bless me god lift me and they never seem to see certain levels of territorial blessings it's not because you cannot buy and sell it's because god has not found a space in your understanding that accommodates his agenda please listen to me the bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power so when it looks like god is withdrawing it's an act of his mercy because that barrenness in understanding will affect you when you are blessed with certain resources and influence the only thing that gives it value is this knowledge so you sit in a position where with one signature you can help a thousand believers but because you do not have this understanding you don't know what to do with this vast influence and satan will come to suggest and tell you there is a way influence is useless when understanding is unfruitful let's define influence we know what evangelism is let me give you my definition of influence influence as i define it is the ability to make men buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty the compelling power that makes men to buy into your convictions you force them to believe what you believe without using cruelty influence now if you this is a dangerous message for the kingdom of darkness believe me this is it that's the secret influence if i can make a territory buy into my ideology which is a reflection of the ideology of the kingdom then in one day a nation can be saved now watch this influence is very powerful because at every point it, they define civilization they define right and wrong they define their mind control systems let's go back to micah's prophecy you see how difficult it is to walk this thing micah says it shall come to pass in the last days that the influence of the church will begin to rise now you understand what he's saying the influence something will happen to that weak church that looks like the rejected stone and he says the influence like a seed that has been thrown to the earth suddenly it will look like the church is playing but you will see it in ever increasing measures and that a day will come listen now that people will begin to note and say look these guys are a force we cannot ignore And as a result, Gentiles will come. That's influence. It's one thing to call them, come see a man. But it's another thing for them to come. He says, shall you also go? He said, to whom shall we go? Joseph said, oh king, find a man who is discreet and wise. And the king said, who shall we find? Listen. If you understand what i share with you today you will step into dimensions you see the value of the anointing is that it comes upon the container of your understanding the true potential of the anointing is seen when your understanding is fruitful are we, are we blessed now now let's deal with this thing we know sociologically speaking that this cosmos this earth popular concept that we all understand in the body of christ 
there are what we know to be seven mountains are we together but then let me share with you something powerful about them seven mountains that control the entire activities of the human race to date the entire earth in terms of influence can be broken into seven mountains <sighs> should i say what i want to say yes. will you believe it yes. okay now man is not tripartite just just listen just absorb it and, and just listen carefully there is no such concept as spirit stand here soul stand here body stand here Th that is nonsense watch this listen i understand what people who purport this are trying to say man is spirit but because of the law of territory that any spirit that must function in the earth realm must sustain a material body made of the materials of that territory it's called the law of territory that's why we cannot live in the water indefinitely why because there is something about that that ecosystem are we together that we were not built for you fly but you don't live in the air if you fly excessively you have something called a jet lag it's a reminder that you were not designed to live on the air are we together now now <laughs> please listen to me man is spirit but a body had to be built for that spirit a body has thou prepared are we together the body hosts the spirit but there was a problem so here is spirit here is body there's no system of relating because they come from two different realms are we together so a medium was created that allows the duality of realms so that that entity can still relate with the realm he came from and still be effective in this realm hold on the name of that connector is called the mind the mind is a medium that's where we get the word media ah. so the assignment of the media is to connect intentions with experience pray in the spirit for one minute we, we have to ask god to help us this morning <laughs> we want to work something seriously in this place the gospel of the kingdom hallelujah please sit down now so you understand my teaching the mind is the faculty that gives the intention of the spirit expression in the earth realm the body is merely an executor it does not have a will of its own that's why when you separate the spirit from the body we name that experience death not the cessation of life but now you have separated them and that body lies down there now this is very powerful so when you say this man is a pastor now if this man god forbid falls to the ground and dies you don't call the dead body a pastor so who was really the pastor are we together our society is shaped by these fears of influence seven of them let me name them quickly we have to save time please write this is very important number one there are concepts that are popular so I will use them and just 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 walk around them the first fear of influence call them mountains now it's called the mountain of religion write it down please 
this is the sphere that decides the spiritual conviction of a people within a territory that means that any territory you can know the quality of what is happening in this mountain by the spiritual convictions of the people within a territory if there is a prevalent error within a territory this is the mountain to blame someone is not doing his job well and is, is by so doing altering the convictions of the people wrongly are we together so when God calls you as a man of God this is the geography of your witness religion are we blessed let me tell you this watch this everybody believes in something don't mind the ignorance of people when they say I don't believe in anything not not believing in anything means you believe in yourself Nebuchadnezzar put an idol of himself so he believed in himself when you believe in yourself as as against believing in God is still idolatry you should believe in yourself when you are motivating people but you can build an image of yourself and worship it you are still an idol worshiper it's just that you are worshiping yourself are we blessed the mountain of religion watch this if God is going to invade a land and birth dimensions of his grace and glory this is where he will come from when he was about to come to the earth he went to the priest Zechariah he didn't go to the scribes he didn't go to the learned people he went here and said Zechariah something is about to happen John is coming he will have to forerun the coming of Jesus John wanted to mess him up Zechariah and he shut his mouth Zechariah became deaf and dumb not because God hated him he wanted to use priesthood to abort destiny and God said no we have to do something this man has an anointing upon him and if he speaks he will affect the climate he has dominion over the cosmos remember Zechariah was the priest that was in charge of priesthood for that year so heaven recognized that office there was a throne that backed that office and God said let's help men by shutting this man's mouth so sometimes shutting your mouth is not wickedness is to be sure that what you are saying is right God may temporarily withdraw your influence and vet what you are about to communicate the content of your message when he finds it right the two leaf gates are open for you then the nations can now hear you are we blessed religion number two the mountain of family this is a very serious mountain every armed robber comes from a home hello every thief was born every troublemaker that harasses society was born every terrorist was born every apostle and great general was born family is very important this is the first revelation of the love of Jesus family the Bible begins with family and ends with family the most honorable name that God gives himself is father not even just Lord Abba he says when you pray to me I have many names but this is my most preferred name Abba father Abba does not mean one who has a child no you don't have to have a child to be father father means source sustainer defender when you call me Abba you acknowledge that every other thing aside from me is only a channel I am the source somebody say my father the mountain of family we have to save marriages we have to save children most of the nonsense that happens in society starts here when a child does not experience love from the home he ships his anger to anywhere he finds himself and his entire lifetime will be spent on a revenge mission and if you happen to be the victim of his revenge 
then he can make your life miserable that person can become a politician tomorrow and hate people unnecessarily because subconsciously the anger from that background please don't say it does not matter some of the happiest people on earth today are either people who uh, sociologically speaking people who come from good families I hope you know that a man and a woman are two dimensions of God he separated them so that God will use marriage to help men understand him the the primary listen the primary assignment of marriage is not just for having children a woman is a dimension of God a man is a dimension of God that separation was made so that man will understand the highest revelation of God in intimacy hmm. that is the reason why the Holy Ghost is also called what the woman is called helper you, you see that yes that means that you understand him when you understand women hallelujah please sit please sit please sit ladies you will make lunch for me this afternoon i mean watch this now please sit down let me tell you this now, now truly speaking i know we're laughing but but just just pay attention listen the mountain of family is very powerful the first sermon a child should have about God should come from the relationship between father, mother, daddy, mommy, not pastor. The first education of the child should not come from school, should come right here. And the way the Bible says is to train up a child. Hold on. How does a train move? Hold me. Do as I do. Don't just listen to me. This is how children are trained. Don't, don't, don't ask me to go and buy you cigarette and when I bring it you now tell me if I catch you smoking I will kill you. No, no, no. Children are not good listeners but they are good imitators. Let me teach you how to train your child. You are saying, son, I want to show you about kingdom finances. This is my own money this is your own right this you are teaching your child now and you're saying now watch me father thank you one day that child will kneel down with you you don't have to invite the child just do it sincerely and consistently and that child will come to you one day you will drive him he will not go because you have become an influence one day when he's alone and you travel the spirit of god will come you can the child can pray you can be praying around the house every night and laying hands on your children your wife and then one day your son will follow you too you'll say boy go and sleep and he will cry he's becoming a man of the spirit by following a man of the spirit Amen. listen when this place is correct it will reduce the work of pastors it will reduce the nuisance that all kinds of trouble and nonsense that men of God go through. What about teachers? The home, a place that should help, a place that should build. This is where you can look and say, look, son, you are handsome. Daughter, you are beautiful and I love you. And she comes back and says, daddy, someone told me i'm not beautiful say don't mind that that blind gentleman i've i'm i'm your father and i know let me show you from scripture so that even when i'm not around that conviction remains true because if i just tell you the day i'm not there you will look for me everywhere but i need to i will start but i will direct you to the word that can outlive me listen i don't want to dwell here valentine is over already but watch this every man is threefold when you are speaking about family every man is a husband defines his relationship exclusively to his wife every man is father defines the jurisdiction of his responsibility every man is priest 
when you find a man that is not these three things run away there's no need saying god is he your will run, i'm answering you now run fast you don't have to be father when you have children the apex of fatherhood is responsibility then every woman is a wife a wife is not one who is married bible says he that finds a wife meaning she has to be a wife before she's found <laughs> hallelujah now please listen listen a wife is a posture is a state there is an understanding you sustain that makes you a wife it has nothing to do with a man coming around you now listen please and then every woman is a mother the hallmark of motherhood is sacrifice any woman that has not yet sustained the fortitude for sacrifice is not a mother even if you have children and then like the man every woman is also priest or every woman is a priest when a proverbs 31 woman meets with a job 29 man they will make a psalm 112 home let's stop here family everybody say family number three the third mountain is education this is a very serious mountain because your concepts and ideas about life are foundationally built from here it matters the quality of our institutions you need to know what your child is hearing when you are not there don't say it does not matter children return back and ask parents questions they cannot sleep daddy what is this and he says how old are you daddy i'm seven who taught you no they didn't teach me i saw my teacher saying it or doing it we must trust god for the grace and the resources to build schools that are run by the value system of the kingdom before the school resumes the teachers do a vigil they lay hands on the report cards of the children this is what we are talking about that while the teacher is teaching suddenly there is a student with all kinds of oppressions coming from a family and the teacher does not say you are lazy and dull because the teacher is also a priest and the teacher says young lady see me in my office i have noticed you don't do well and she says it's not my fault and says let me show you how it works in the kingdom there is a spirit in man now please don't think i'm just entertaining you whether you are interested or not god is up already doing it <laughs> our schools where we teach our children values of honor diligence respect have you noticed how our teenagers resent god if we i want to say it respectfully i love the body of christ i'm sent to the body but this where you family this right here was the mistake of the west when mighty things were happening in the 60s and the 70s some of our mothers and our fathers who continue to do great things around they ignored the children notice in the exodus of israel the a negotiation came let the men go but leave and later it's okay let your children your children is your future you see why the miracle of that woman whose husband was a prophet and died the debtors what did they want to do with the children you are not successful if you are the only one who is successful until your children reflect your values you have failed believe me when i tell you this our teenagers you off the television they switch it on 
when people watch movies or television and they say it's rated 18 all that is just to make sure the law doesn't harass you but most people know where to find everything something is going seriously wrong otherwise one day like most teenagers and young people don't know what a typewriter is someone is going to say who is jesus say my jesus i don't know him what what do you mean your he's your jesus not our jesus say jesus i don't know him he's strange and there rose another pharaoh who knew not joseph but in the name of jesus there are people here who will be sent to this mountain to be the preservers of the heritage of knowledge with God involved. There were two trees in Eden. One was the tree that ministered life. The other was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the Babylonian system. One of the most painful things for a parent is that after laboring for years, you watch your child become a complete opposite of your ideology. When you say Jesus, he says nonsense. When you say moral excellence, he says rubbish. When you say responsibility, he says, what does that mean? We will lose a generation if we ignore education. There are people today who can, I know it happens a lot in Africa, people just buy results people just buy all kinds of things and they have absolutely nothing to deliver they bribe their way from high school primary school we call it college and all through and there is absolutely nothing to deliver this is a mountain i'm showing you so that i will verify what you saw in your dream the unusual passion for education is not carnality because we think spirituality is when you become a man of God on the pulpit. I'm showing you now that this is also a minister. So when you find out that the prophet who is called into the prophetic ministry is having an unusual urge to pray. He's praying 16 hours. It's because of the design of his call. You find yourself having an excessive appetite for knowledge and books. You have now feel bad because that man has defined his spiritual life as the template to measure spirituality. No, stay on your course with honor. You are growing to it. Is God blessing us? The next mountain, very quickly, number four, arts and entertainment. This is very powerful. This is the mountain that teaches us how to celebrate success. This is the mountain that shows us the end of where we want to go to. This is the mountain that provides inspiration through the results of others. When you watch a footballer or you watch a football team lift the trophy, you can sit back there and just imagine yourself inside a jersey and say, look, I'm coming to. This mountain inspires in no small way, but it is also dangerous because they can teach you to celebrate success in a way that extracts Christ out of the equation. Musicians, this is the mountain of celebrities and there's nothing wrong being a celebrity provided Christ will be represented there. That's why I told you, you need God before you get here. The pressure here is serious. Ask any man who has tasted of honor and influence and they will tell you it's not as easy as we say. I will say no to everybody. Well, obtain grace. Eat because the journey is far. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Imagine if Michael Jackson ever said Jesus. He will save more souls than many crusades combined. Not because he believed what he said but just because he said it from a standpoint of influence. You see the reason why every time Jesus met celebrities, he did not ignore them. He knew they had power. He knew they had influence. Influence right here 
is powerful this is a place that shows you the the excellency of being valuable this is where value is celebrated if you are not valuable this is the schoolmaster that will teach you a lesson this is where the spotlight resides it will inspire you to be creative it will inspire you to be valuable and let me tell you there are people your assignment requires you being a celebrity it is not from a carnal standpoint so while you are becoming that award-winning tv hostess and that musician people think you are just no you are still a priest in disguise it's like a terrorist group you are a doctor but you are a terrorist you are a celebrity but at the back of it you are a dangerous prophet so people just know that you are the tv hostess and people love you you are piling awards and when the kings come to your house and say how do you do it you look at them and you tell them listen a man can receive nothing do you think they will listen to you absolutely they will if results were cheap everyone will have it results are loudspeakers is God helping us I have to rush so you must trust God and we're going to pray and in this conference there will be graces released upon people listen I made up my mind that I would never lead a people who are just spiritual alone there must be people who by the grace of God will be gatekeepers of strategic spaces of influence right here the next mountain this one is one that you should respect it's called the mountain of media comes from the word medium they are real mediators they create imagery they define your convictions you only know what you are told genesis 3 and the lord had the the, the bible says and adam had the voice of god walking in the cool of the day and when he met adam look at me he said adam where art thou and adam said i heard your voice and i hid because i was naked next question who told you you have you have outsourced an information from a media that is not me the media is powerful where is media you mind control systems that's why advertisement they spend billions of dollars please talk to me your business people many of you the advertising industry for two minutes during olympic or world cup or any of the football international football or whatever it is for two minutes people pay millions of dollars do you know why because the media someone may want you to now begin to buy this water and then they call a celebrity to drink it and then he drinks it in a way a manner that makes you hate the one you now have in your fridge now you don't know that that hatred has been planted till you go to drink it you look at it and say no no i shouldn't i media there is something they can do to god here that will make you hate god there is something they can do to church here that will make you hate church there is something they can tell you from here that will make you hate the bible it is within their power to paint any picture the media is powerful the media can make you in five minutes to hate your wife by telling you a story and it will paint it in a way these people are masters of psychology you look at your wife and say from today we don't stay in the same room again say well, honey we've been married for 20 years sir. but someone can hijack this media and make a man who was about to run away from his wife come back and say honey you know what after 20 years it still looks like yesterday the media mind control systems hmm. please understand what i tell you africa this is what has destroyed us somebody told us something that we are weak somebody told us something that we are not strong somebody told us something 
Now, I love the body of Christ, but listen to what I tell you. Be careful what you hear. Yeah. I heard of a story, a real story, of someone who was trying to climb, achieve an impossible feat. He was climbing a very tall palm tree. And when he started climbing, people were stopping him and saying, Hey, don't climb. You will fall down. And the man kept climbing. He was looking at them. They were clapping their hands and saying, No. And he was laughing at them. And he kept climbing. And at a point, they kept quiet. When he arrived there, they were all clapping. And they found out that the man was deaf. So his interpretation of their criticizing him was an applause. There was a media system that sponsored his growth. If that man were not deaf, he would never attain that height. Someone told you, you are not beautiful. That you will need to turn stones to be bred to be approved. Whereas he already said you are the beloved son. Someone told you, we are victims of what we were told. But the Bible says, let this mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There is a mentality. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. When God wants to save a man, he will introduce you to media. The greatest is a compendium of the thoughts of God. We call it the word of God, the logos of God. Please look at me. He says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise even unto salvation. This is it. I found your word and I did eat it. It became a joy and a rejoicing. This is the media that changed my life. Vetoed my background. Mm. I guarantee you, expose yourself to this. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life, not to everybody, to those who find them. And health to their flesh. When God wants to motivate you, he will bring a screen before you. You can call it a vision. You can call it a dream. He shows you tomorrow while you are not yet there. So that all the vicissitudes of life that frustrate you in your today, suddenly there is a media that flashes you. Joseph, do not mind the pit. It is the throne you saw. When Joseph was in the pit, even in the pit he remembered i saw the sun i saw the moon i saw 11 stars capacity please culture what you listen to please culture what you hear there is a generation depending on your transformation i am ever aware that everything I expose myself to endangers a generation or blesses that generation. And for the sake of that generation, since God has brought me to a point where my words are received by a generation, I owe that generation the purity of spiritual communication. And so I discipline myself. Why? Because the content that we feed our generation will make them. Do you like what I'm teaching? Yeah. Isn't it amazing that we've not even talked about money? And yet this is how to be rich. You make money of understanding. These are the systems that coordinate your understanding. Then you will lay up wealth. Gold as dust. The mountain. Are we still there? This mountain is important. The mountain of politics and governance. Watch this. Please look at me. The mountain of politics and governance. South Africa, look at me. Africa, hear me. 
it was daniel in babylon that taught us the excellency of finding god's advocates in government daniel is a very interesting personality he came as a slave and then the bible says by the excellency of the spirit of god at work in him he was exalted to positions that gave him the ability to represent the purposes of god daniel begins to pray and because of his prayer the controlling power of the persians the spirits around meadow persia that was manipulating the activities within that sociological sphere could not work because an advocate was in government and a house of parliament came together by the influence of spirits but they used laws to express those influence and said for 30 days king nebuchadnezzar let us pass a law they didn't say we want to attack daniel they said let us pass a law no one imagine what happens to a territory for 30 days when men don't pray a law for only 30 days and they came to catch daniel and could not find anything at all except as touching the matter of his god now watch this Daniel opened the gate and continued to pray as his custom was. And the Bible says one time they came and caught him. When they caught Daniel, now Daniel is supposed to be in trouble. Hallelujah. And because of the excellent spirit, even the king was touched. Daniel, why did you do this? You would have just obeyed the law. They throw Daniel in the lion's den. And Daniel shows them, I'm not only a member of parliament. There is something about me you do not know you threw a member of parliament but now watch a kingdom citizen hmm. many people focus on the lion they forget daniel he was not passing any law there he was showing them the excellency of the graces that were upon him hey when i wear that suit do not make a mistake i'm not only passing laws Makato I am an advocate. I stand to promote the interests of a government. And let me speak to someone here. May the grace that makes for government rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm prophesying to people here who have had dreams. You know you are to be in the parliament in South Africa. Don't let no man keep you down. It may take time, but climb that ladder with grace and intelligence. And you sit there and represent the interest of the Christ. Please sit down. Government. Hear me? one policy can shut the interest of god within a territory not two not three i can be as anointed as i am but if one law is passed with all the anointing with all the prophecies with all the miracle grace one policy but there has to be someone there who will sit down and you look at yourselves there it doesn't matter what party you know that all those things are just mediums for expression and you stand what is this decision about and you go back to the holy ghost and you come back okay i found the idea do a b c and heaven says thank you you have preserved the next 30 years of south africa just by being a correct parliamentarian please pay attention to government it matters christ must be represented here this is where jezebel sits when jezebel comes she wants government she wants to marry whoever is the king jezebel is an interesting wife she doesn't just marry any man are you a king no i'm not interested in you where are you herod where are you ahab jezebel marries the kings so that she can use the throne to fight elijah but god is able to do 
just what he says he will do over your life he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God cause he wants you South Africa the final mountain this is where the king of Tyre himself sits mm. look up this is the mountain of business and finance this is where the king of Tyre the old serpent he sits here by himself not Jezebel now himself because this is the mountain that forms and controls all over mountains Please listen to me. The mountain of finance is not about money. The mountain of finance is about control. We live in a civilization that is economically driven. Let me show you two scriptures that will bless you. Ready? Proverbs 20. I think it should be. Proverbs chapter 20. Ooh, 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 ooh. 22. Proverbs 22. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7. Proverbs 22. Read with me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ready? One, two, read. Uh huh. One more time. Just keep verse 2. Keep verse 2 media. Now look at that very serious statement. The rich and the poor meet together. He says the Lord is the maker of them all. Why didn't he just say the Lord has made all the inhabitants? The Lord never made them so. He made them all. But they separated themselves. And gave themselves a definition called rich poor please look at me the battle for prosperity is not a battle for carnal recognition the battle for prosperity is the battle to redeem time please look at me I need to explain this to you the the apex of dominion is dominion over time please listen to me the unit of destiny is time whatever eats your time destroys your destiny are we together now it takes time to love God it takes time to know God it takes time to build your relationship with your wife and husband it takes time to know your children it takes time to sit down and think well and live a useful life everybody shout time one more time shout time so this is the foundation of the teaching on this mountain time redemption that whatever takes your time is taking your destiny do we agree so the battle for prosperity is the battle for time redemption is the battle for efficiency it's not just the battle for cars houses estates and names no those are very inferior motivations the battle for time so satan in exploring the cosmos found out he had to find where man's time goes to and he found out that our time goes to making ends meet and he says that's it i got it i got it now since your time is committed to making sure that you have the resources that make you alive and strong let me do something to your time and where you spend it so that you will now be so distracted and not have the time to serve the purposes of god watch this when the name do you know one of in israel 
and in Egypt when the nation of Israel went to Egypt they were being given straw straw for their building is that true and then the time they had left they would tell Moses go and advocate our exodus the time has come for us to go when that message got to Pharaoh hear what Pharaoh said is it not because you have time we are giving them straw so the little time they have they can call upon God he says stop giving them straw so that the time they have left they will focus on getting straw oh you still have time to come to church in the morning let's do something to the economy you still have time to arrive home by nine and pray with your family let's do something to your life you still have time to pray for one hour with your wife no do something to your time the battle for wealth is the battle for time redemption please listen to me it takes time to truly love God now I always give this example let's assume this gentleman is say 50 years you get born again at age 40 do you know that's already a disadvantage thank God you've met Christ now but you get born again at age 40 the time it will take to receive the Holy Ghost argue about your philosophies versus the Word of God and then later now agree it's going to take time to understand the things of the kingdom by that time you are 50 or 55 now you now learn the laws of wealth and all of these principles you are about to build your first house at 60. now i'm, I'm not don't feel bad it's not a testimony now hold on 40 years spiritually speaking is behind you there has to be a way of redeeming time and the bible says and i will restore the years God's concern please sit down we're almost there so what you really lost was not money what you really lost was not business what you really lost was not relationship what makes you really cry is time time give me time and anything left can come back give me time and I can rise again give me time and I can learn again but the challenge is that when time goes it does not return God does not restore time just by taking you backward he takes what is backward and makes it to wait for you please hear me let me act out something I always act out and may this be a prophecy for someone please come my friend watch this everyone these two people start their journey in destiny born the same day at the same time right both of you will move slowly and then you will stop somewhere now this guy starts his journey through life and a delay happens to him everybody say delay, delay. this is his colleague making progress in life and there he is standing there keep moving now you start coming that's not restoration that's progress because he's still behind the Holy Ghost has to pick you and bring you listen so that when I check the equation of your life I don't see the gap the lag it's no longer there watch this so a woman is being buried for 10 years even if she has a child that's not restoration that's progress so God gives her triplets in nine months it's not about three children it's about taking ten years and putting it in nine months listen these are the systems of advantage that are in the kingdom everybody's destiny by default is disadvantaged you are mandated through spiritual intelligence to now outsource these systems and begin to introduce them to your destiny space are we blessed now here we are 
before we pray and blow the roof off let me just establish this I tell you why God wants you to prosper he wants you to prosper so that you can gain time that a day can come I can come to your house on a Tuesday morning and all I see you doing is that you're on your knees with your wife saying today is a time off to worship God and they say you want to die of hunger you say no there is a system put in place the faithfulness of God I can pay for my time look up this is a hundred dollar bill this thing right here you see has relocated people out of the will of God please look up this has made people to marry people they have no business marrying and you say it does not have a voice and you say it's weak this little note right here has made people betray friends this thing right here has made people to get into diabolic things that should not be please look up this thing right here has made others die and go to hell because the opportunity to get the gospel to them could not get this thing here has broken homes this thing here has made children who would have been presidents right now to just be pushing trucks and trolleys around the road because they could not be educated if you do not have this you are really disadvantaged now please listen now you understand my perspective so when we talk about and this is the challenge with the prosperity message as it were respectfully speaking the the object behind it and the motivation is not just a flamboyant life just to satisfy flesh there is a bigger and nobler agenda we're talking of kingdom come listen I left home over a week ago I'm only going to be back home by the end of the month and I'm only able to do that because all things are well at home I wouldn't lie to you here are we together if all things are not well at home the concentration to stay with the spirit and produce the revelations that bless the nations will not be there there's no point telling lies we're not acting the body of Jesus is hanging on the cross and a prayer warrior's prayer could not bring it down the salvation of man is at the expense of this mountain and a man who had the influence goes to the king and says king I have a grave don't worry just give me the body and that body do you know there are certain revelations you cannot have when you are poor because there is nothing you can do about it now listen the spirit of God that would bring deliverance for Israel was going around Egypt and everybody who could see visions was poor including Joseph so he had to make do with a king because if if someone in the camp of Israel saw the vision will he go and tell Pharaoh and say I, I saw four cat, uh, seven cattle eating the lean ones they say please go back and walk you are just stressed give him a day off but listen when God wants his will to be done he will make sure that will is received by men of influence I'm recalibrating your understanding about the message of prosperity let me tell you why I hate poverty I don't hate poverty just because I want to feel rich I hate poverty because of its effect in kingdom advance if poverty were neutral to the gospel neutral to the purposes of God I wouldn't have a problem with it but I found out through experience and through the word that lack of resources is terrible it's worse than sickness yeah you can be sick and not have the appetite to eat but you can be poor and all the malls are open and you are still watching 
and your children are watching listen to me there are many books today that should go around the world encounters with truths that can bless nations but this is what limited it not the government not a policy are we together now yes, sir. many cheap victories that would have been won money complicated the destinies of people the lack of it and i made up my mind i said lord i don't want to stand as a man of god on stage and begin to manipulate people and so you must show me the systems now please watch this in 2007 I had a vision, I had an encounter with a great man of God in that vision. And then, apostle, I was led into a room. Please listen carefully. When I entered that room, I saw several currencies of several nations. Until then, I didn't pay attention to anything finance. It was just encounters, Holy Spirit, purpose, kingdom fire miracles and that's wonderful but god was introducing me to a new dimension of the kingdom so that it would bring balance and efficiency to my life and now i entered that room please listen to me and when i saw that i was asked to pick and the interesting thing was the loss you would have for money under that condition ah let me pack everything no no at all i was totally not connected to it I just picked a few of the bundles and I was done. One of the few times in my life that I had the audible voice of God, I had four words, massive kingdom wealth transfer. I didn't understand what I heard. Lord, what is the meaning of this? Many years ago, we went for a crusade somewhere and it was a mighty crusade with signs and wonders but i could not pay the bills for the sound people as anointed as i was they had given me time if you do not pay these bills we may get people and go and lock you up did i steal no this thing wanted to put me in prison please listen to me listen for your children listen for tomorrow listen for the gospel listen for the sake of his majesty south africa hear me i bring you a message it is more than business it is more than buying and selling this is a battle for preserving time for efficiency whoever has this will sit on the throne you cannot remain in the corridors of power without this there's no point arguing it. It is true. Zechariah chapter 1. We're going to pray. I apologize. I know I've taken a little time, but just, just give me a few minutes to tie this up. Or let's do Haggai. Haggai 1 and verse 8. Let's do Haggai. Well done, guys. I'll soon release you. Thank you. Haggai 1 and verse 8. Now read with me, believers. Go up to the mountain. It's not a suggestion. Go up the mountain. It's an instruction. Do something on that mountain if you do it well. You will come down with wood. What is this made out of? The prophet could not see money. So he was saying what he saw then. He said, whatever I see you coming down with is made of wood. Go up the mountain. You don't get wood on the mountain. You get wood in a forest. But this kind of wood, you get it on a mountain that system do something an interaction in that system will grant you access to wood when you come down build the house give
give me space give me time and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 Harus kali brandi kapashu brahasile balata Cry yet saying Thus saith the Lord My cities through prosperity Shall be spread abroad And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion And choose Jerusalem the name of God is heavy it takes resources to keep it high if we want the nations in reality listen there is only so much you can do for yourself in terms of your personal comfort no matter how loud you are there is only a limit we're talking of the resources that will save nations in a day there are three reasons why God blesses us and please if you are a man of God here and a business person now please sit down sit down can you spare me 10 more minutes or so please please be patient with me God brought me here to just what we want I told you there are doors that we must close once and for all there are three reasons why God blesses us in the kingdom please understand this number one he blesses us to live a comfortable life number two he blesses us so that we can provide the resources that makes for kingdom advance kingdom advance is not just a call that they make in church and say so this so a thousand rand a million rand is part and parcel of the responsibility of believers it's just that how we've gone about it is what makes it look like it's some crookish thing in islam and other religions they know it's a foundational teaching that part of your kingdom responsibility is to make resources available for kingdom advance not by manipulation by revelation and the third reason why god blesses us in this kingdom is to be able to reveal the love of jesus to a dying world in a definite and a practical way these are the only three reasons why god blesses us in this kingdom number one to live a comfortable life let me tell you poverty is evil just find a way of believing i'm not lying to you poverty is evil yes it is yes it is are we together so the lord wants to empower me so i can be an extension of his glory across the earth he wants to empower me so that I can contribute to the lifting of the name, to lifting the name of Jesus even in South Africa. That when the name of Jesus is going down, we stand and say, no way. The name of Jesus continues to be lifted high. Three revelations that represent the foundation for wealth. This is the mountain that concerns many people all over the world people worry and stress now young people who are in early 20s collapse because of high blood pressure who are they taking care of you see people talking to themselves and driving till they bash a tree they they they, they did not even see that they were alone you, you, you see if we don't if we don't do something about this we are going to lose people someone gets up and sits on his bed with the bills in front of him takes a deep breath and that's it he's gone but the bill is still there so someone is going to inherit it remember uh, uh, um, uh, second kings now that's why some people cry when others die it's not just that they are missing of course yes thank god in all fairness they are going but then what they are leaving behind now these are very real issues let me tell you very real issues Please write this down foundational revelations that we must have you want to take charge of Tyre and Sidon the marketplaces of the earth number one all wealth comes from God all wealth are you tired guys I will soon release you also. you've been sitting there standing I think I have to pray for you I mean you can't be standing here for nothing now write this down please all wealth comes from God 
Do you know what that means? That God is Abba. Everybody say Abba. Abba means source. That means every other thing, including your business, is only a channel. The moment your business or your job becomes your source, you are finished. So all wealth and all blessings come from God. That's number one. Then in addition, look at me please. All blessings come from God through men to men. This is the second revelation you must have. Nothing really comes from God to you. It comes from God through men to men. Hallelujah. Who is into cloth in here? Seated here. I'm seeing an anointing on you, my brother. This man wearing suit. Stand up. I don't know you, but this man is going far. I don't know him more, but I'm, what I'm seeing in the spirit, there is a mighty anointing, mighty anointing that is coming on you for it is is a true grace for wealth but then you would dress kings believe me when i tell you this you will dress kings you will dress nobles god will connect you to great men of god across many spheres and you will experience the ministry of the Holy Ghost in unusual dimensions. He will bring you ideas, creative ideas of the Spirit. I release that grace upon you right now. Take that grace right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's finish up. Where was I? All blessings. Now imagine that gentleman. It's not just that it's today God wanted to say that to him listen 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 the day you find the man sent to you is the day God has come to you if your pastor refused to put this program what you saw in your dream will still not happen even though God already said it please there are certain things you have to this is the world of men don't say it's only god no 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 god tells david you are king samuel says no the answer is no david is left in the wilderness and god does not bypass him to say you are wasting my time he comes to plead with a man and say please how long shall you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king carry the horn don't waste this man's time men can define the destinies of others now this is not in some manipulative way but it is true god blesses men through men one man's signature can open gates over your life in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you oh esther who likes you oh roof who likes you hallelujah please don't miss tonight i have to stop here let me reserve what else i have to share for tonight listen to me all wealth comes from God it comes through men to men I've spoken about everywhere here you may not be called into these various places but this one concerns you for sure it is your business hallelujah tonight I'm going to be sharing with you principles now I know that seated here are business veterans your pastor being one of them many of you here are doing well and I don't mean to insult your pedigree and make it look as though you do not understand your art but let me tell you there are superior dimensions in the spirit let me round up by teaching you three levels of wealth 
there are seven dimensions of prosperity the Lord revealed to me that will come to the body of Christ before Christ returns we are only in the third dimension now the first level of wealth is called transactional wealth this is the level where you receive financial rewards among many other rewards for packaging your value turning it into products and services serving it with excellence to a targeted consumer base you call that business are we together so you are paid in exchange for your time and the value that you provide that is a level the limitation is that the price attached to it is fixed if you are a billionaire and this bottle of water is how many how, how much is this say six rands you are not going to pay a million rands for this even though you have it because it is valuable but not that scarce are we together the second level of wealth is called transformational wealth here you do not sell your value you dispense it freely you change lives and then they are mandated according to the reward system of the kingdom to bless you as an expression of their perception of your value that is why a man of God may not charge you money he will still bless you you may never even know him but God's reward system mandates that one day according to his system of justice he will be blessed for what he has done the power of transformational wealth is that you are blessed based on the perception of how valuable you are in the eyes of the giver so someone can give your man of God a hundred rands and another will say you blessed me so much you changed my life here's a million rands so in one day you can quantum leap into dimensions now the second level is very difficult because you will be a fool for many years people will take you for granted you will give and pour yourself into people many people will trivialize your impact but the Bible never said you will reap where you sowed he said you will reap what you sowed you can sow in South Africa and reap in the US the earth is a soil any location authorized by God can bring you a harvest so if all you do is business and you are not changing lives you will be slow listen one man's thank you can be your profit for 10 years you must explore all the avenues that fast track your financial growth you can sell your value and have a snail like movement for many decades and yet one person can look at you and say apostle thank you you organize the excel conference thank you to your dear wife would you want me to override the checks for this conference for the next 10 years transformational wealth the third value of wealth the third level of wealth is the highest as revealed of the three is called sovereign wealth wealth by the finger of God the power of the prophetic Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 listen to me it is true that the prophetic can bless And the elders of the Jews built it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel through the prophesying. Not through blocks and cement. They built and finished through the prophesying. Let me tell you this. The prophetic has been abused and manipulated in many circles in Africa, respectfully speaking and i speak as one who is part of the body of christ i never speak against the body of christ i am part of it i speak with all honor but it is true 
that there's been a lot of imbalances and exaggerations and abuses here and there but the prophetic still works it can change a man's life overnight let me tell you how the prophetic works realities in the realm of the spirit all exist what you call creation is simply transportation from the realm of the spirit what we call in this realm creation is simply a system that transports spiritual realities from a realm and a domain that is more than the three-dimensional realm listen that means the favor on your life already exists in the realm of the spirit the bible says that god had blessed us with all blessings spiritual blessings but they reside in the heavenly places and are routed through the office of the christ this was paul's doctrine to the church in ephesus are we together now and now the bible says listen carefully that because those things are in the spirit they exist the assignment of the prophetic is to give them dates and make them appear To appoint unto them that mourn you can make a man's next year become tomorrow that, that's the prophetic please believe what I'm telling you in the land of Samaria women were eating their future because that's what happens when people are stressed they eat their future they eat their capital they eat their children suddenly news gets to Elisha and he stands under the influence of the spirit and says by this time tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened he was making something that already existed in the realm of the spirit listen everything you are looking for is also looking for you the prophetic accelerates your connection yes the job you seek is finding you too the lifting you seek is finding you too but it can come at a slow rate that your lifetime may not accommodate so the prophetic with one word truly inspired of the spirit four lepers the prophetic once the prophetic word is uttered, is uttered the spirit of wisdom begins to hover around the horizon to look for the physical actors that will make that prophecy come to pass There is a science to prophecy it can be understood so when I speak over your life I'm not just speaking over your life by the Spirit I am calling what must enter your life within the time allocated to make that word not look like a lie so if it takes favor to make sure that word does not fall see the word of God is a tray it's a messenger it returns to God as proof that what was on it was delivered the word of God is a tray it carries favor it carries healing it carries blessings so if I send you you hold this and you bring it to me if I see you returning back with an empty saucer it's proof that what was on it reached me so the word of God returns to him as proof that it got to the receiver so that he will send it again there is the spoken word but there is the sent word the sent word is a messenger that does not fail mobile telecommunication systems is an attempt to explain how the word of God works there are 7.2 billion people on earth but I can type a text right now and send it to you it will meet a billion waves there but it will push them till it gets to your phone and that that text is quick and powerful is so sharp it can cut every other network it's an attempt to explain the word of God so that when words come you don't just say amen but you understand what should be happening if I declare and I say may your destiny help us find you you don't just say amen you expect them immediately as you walk out of here and someone says sorry I remember my wrong since 2017 I should have reached you you are now not surprised because you now know prophecy is at work we are going to pray listen these are the systems of the kingdom that make men 
dominion is a resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of the kingdom the weightiness the vastness and the accuracy of the spiritual information that you sustain is what defines your possibilities in this kingdom hallelujah when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was all you made up and we're standing here hear me I am a product of many anointings I'm a product of many graces I have partaken of the investment that is upon the body of Christ the Lord wants to supply for us the grace I know we have the grand the, the, the evening session tonight and I apologize for taking our time but I just want to wrap up this time we'll have the time to pray for people again in the evening we may not have the time to do that but I came here with a burden this morning and this afternoon. I want you to taste of a dimension of the grace and the power of God that is truly able to shift men. You see, the Bible says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet, they were preserved. This, this is not some nonsense and rubbish just, just around to manipulate your mind. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me, I would share more on my encounter, hopefully maybe by night. He stretched forth his hand towards me and a light came. How I did not die is a mystery. Please listen to me it was like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant and in another vision as I would have the Lord spoke to me and said my son on this day I give you my presence as a gift and I saw an angel of the Lord that stands by me and he said he will walk with you and I said, what is his name? And he said, he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. And then, in another encounter, the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, every nation and every territory I will send you to, there must be someone in that nation that the light that came from me to you that light must find someone within that nation I want to pray for you it is the light that produces the miracles just help me with the symbol thank you Come on. go around me I apologize if in any way I sound arrogant no this is not it's not in any way the boasting of the flesh we stand as ordinary people who have been helped by the spirit we are not ashamed to declare our limitation outside of his influence but please hear me in the next five minutes if you can believe what will happen to you you will marvel and wonder at the immutability the forcefulness of the power and the grace of God please lift your voice in one minute and declare enough is enough I'm tired of this level in the spirit please someone pray you're a man of God it's time to pray there are people that pray in this church South Africa pray Skeparus Kelanda Skabaha Shalata Shift me 
financially take me to another dimension shift my ministry to another dimension my business hallelujah please listen every blessed man knows that you prosper based on your backing from the realm of the spirit james chapter 2 and verse 26 apostle james was teaching on faith and works and he veered off and borrowed a kingdom concept he says for as the body without a spirit is dead you kill the body of anything by taking its spirit component away from it and you give life to everybody your business is a body where is the spirit that backs it your job is a body where is the spirit that backs it because james said when all you have is a body without the spirit component that backs it it is dead your church is a body where is the spirit component that backs it it is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the lord's doing i want to shift you from being ordinary men of god it's time for us to rise to supernatural dimensions of power apostles and prophets and teachers business people it's time for you to rise by a mystery man cannot understand by what force does your business move forward how come you attract clients from all over the world it is by the spirit hallelujah now listen our time is gone just two prayers i want to release the grace for speed please hear me the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jisrael when speed is on you you can start from anywhere to anywhere listen as i pray for you the power of god will come on you many of you will start running physically please help them and bring them so they don't injure themselves whether you are an usher or not i stand in the name of jesus and i decree and declare house of treasures south africa take the grace for speed take that grace now take that grace now help them take that grace now help them please speed I take away delay by the Spirit of God I come with the rod of a higher priesthood I shift you in ministry I shift you in business speed speed help them help them help them speed hold them so they don't enjoy themselves they are not running on their own please hold them speed Kaparata shikata. speed hold them please hold that lady please let her not injure herself please whether you are an usher or not hold them anyone running around so that they don't injure themselves i shift you again i'm praying take that grace take that grace take that grace take that grace in business take that grace in ministry take that grace i bring you the power of the holy ghost upon your life ideas quick understanding Time to pray for you. Take that grace. 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 Yep. Never be the same in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
the last prayer Acts chapter 12 the influence has a gate Acts chapter 12 we're rounding up please look up now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the Jews quickly please verse 2 and he killed James the brother of John with the sword three and because he saw that it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to take Peter also next verse 4 and when he had apprehended him he put him where remember the purpose was to shut his influence so he kept him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people five Peter was therefore kept in prison but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him now watch what is about to happen to someone and Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with hands and chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison next verse hallelujah and behold look up I want to show you how doors open that bring a man to a realm of influence the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in prison where did the light start shining the light comes to you in prison first and then he smote Peter by the side saying raise him up arise up quickly and his chains fell off his hands the chains had fallen but he was still in prison follow the progression next verse the angel said to him gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me verse 9 now watch this he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision verse 10 is where the mystery is watch this and when they were past the first gate the prison had three gates the first gate brings you out of that place of dungeon then he went to the second gate you are out but you are not yet in the city you are not in the prison but you are not in the city either and then he came to a mysterious gate called the iron gate take note immediately he said this is the gate that leads to where the city there is a gate that leads to the city for your business for your products and he said he opened the gates and he went out when that gate opens the next thing you see is the city influence this is the gate that grants you access to the hear ye him anointing there is a grace that makes a generation hear you just because you have something to sell or something to say does not mean people will come to reward your value he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder can I pray that prayer for you in the name of Jesus house of treasures South Africa business people politicians men and women of God I stand by the rod of the prophetic and the apostolic and I speak to the gate that must be open for your influence Ephata, be open be open for your business be open for ministry be open in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please be seated let's get to work let's start with Proverbs 23 and verse 26 Proverbs 23 and verse 26 praise the Lord the preacher is teaching here and he says my son just a little volume keyboardist God bless you my son he says give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways the first instruction is give me your heart I don't trust you till I have your heart 
I don't trust your vulnerabilities until I have your heart. Then it says, when you're done giving me your heart, the next instruction is let your eyes observe my ways. Because the secret of dominion is in understanding the ways of God. Hallelujah. I have said it again and again. We're talking about living a life of excellence. This church is a testimony of something that has been done right. Remember the sacrifice of Cain and Abel. When Cain came and met the Lord and began to complain, and the Lord told him, paraphrasing, if you had done it right, wouldn't it be accepted? The Bible says, the same Lord is rich unto all, so there are no biases in God. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. It's up to you to choose. So he says, give me your heart. And then let your eyes observe my ways. Believers are blessed to the degree to which they understand the ways of God. I will continue to say this every the kingdom of God is a compendium of limitless possibilities but they are controlled by exact knowledge there is an exact body of spiritual knowledge that is responsible for restoration responsible for lifting responsible for speed responsible for prosperity responsible for influence we are not listen look at me when it has to do with walking with God, creativity is not required. You just obey. The precepts have been laid. You are not given the liberty to guess your way around. No, it is when it has to do with dominion and kingdom legislature, that's where your creativity comes in. But as far as following God is concerned, the path has, the Bible says, Jeremiah 6, 16 now, uh, please give it to us Jeremiah 6 and verse 16 it says thus saith the Lord stand ye in the ways South Africa and see and ask for the old path the old path is not a denomination's path the old path is the ancient precepts of God the mystery that made men it says where is the good way and walk therein and then you will enter your Sabbath hallelujah so the things that we share and, and 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 this is one of the reasons why i i love i love your man of god and the wife it is important that the truths that we share um that we find their applicability in our lives it's completely useless to continue to consume knowledge that does not have applicability spiritually and then sociologically speaking i should be able to see what role the truth i am receiving can play in my life here and now not every spiritual information is useful as far as your relevance in this kingdom is concerned that's why john began to teach i mean jesus was teaching as recorded by john he said in john 16 he says i have many things to tell you now but ye cannot bear them he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. You must be guided. Hallelujah. Truth is like a knife. It depends on how you hold it. It can kill you. Hallelujah. And so as we explore the mysteries of the kingdom, I call them. It is important for us to understand that these principles are exact in delivering their results. There is a precision to their operation. They deliver to precision. The difference between a chef and someone who is just a freelance cook is precision. Precision. They can tell you what will happen and make it happen. Precision. Hallelujah. And so I'm trusting that at the end of this conference, that many gaps in our lives and our spiritual experiences will be so closed that you can know what result, what, what spiritual law leads to what outcome. This is what maturity is about. 
spiritual growth and maturity is measured by two indices number one is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the christ that is the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth the degree to which you conform in experience to the image and the character of the christ the second index is your depth of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching still an extension of what we know as the beatitudes and he said because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom he says the mysteries of the kingdom the word know there does not just mean to be aware it's the same word that is used as a man knowing his wife paul calls it fellowship with the mystery so that you become one are we together My greatest fear in life is not Satan. My greatest fear in life is believing a lie. It says, be careful lest what you call light be darkness. You can believe a lie for many years and then painfully find out after investing decades of your life that you were wrong. And so I'm not ashamed every time I come before his presence. I want him to vet my understanding. To find out that what I believe and I communicate to the nations is accurate. That after 30 years we will still stand upon that conviction as the things most surely believed. So what you are learning this morning is powerful. Listen, this in my opinion is about the greatest revelation as far as influence and dominion is concerned that god taught me second only to my encounter with god it takes love to share certain things because the bible says to not cast your pearl before swine there are dimensions of spiritual truth that come with blood and pain and tears and everyone who truly understands it will treasure it but then in an atmosphere like this, it is safe to let it out from the depth of your heart so that the saints be edified. Are we blessed? Amen. I have watched with shock and wonder. Please look at me. I have watched well-intentioned, well-meaning people become crippled as far as their influence and their rising to the highest levels of life is concerned i have watched people educated and uneducated alike i have watched great preachers great business people i have watched you know very mighty people with all kinds of advantages around them and yet they fail to rise to become all that god designed them to be and for many years i kept asking the question why do doors close for others and open for others why do people remain limited for many years well-meaning tongue-talking born again genuine sincere but limited i've seen many hard-working diligent people remain poor remain broke they struggle they pray they struggle things don't go well i've seen well-intentioned preachers they fast they pray they are sincere they love the lord but they never 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 their influence will never cross their local environment and i wanted to know why and i found it because everyone that seeketh find it if you don't find it's because you did not seek enough remember i taught you yesterday that everything you seek is also looking for you hallelujah and i found it in a very powerful mystery that i will be sharing with you and i pray in the name of jesus that this tonight or today will change your life forever the law of honor open our eyes and give us wisdom in the name of jesus the kingdom of god is built on laws 
laws here does not just mean old testament laws is just a generic name to mean precepts and ordinances are we together that the kingdom of god operates based on precepts and ordinances that means that every dimension of grace is activated by recognizing and applying certain keys let me repeat every dimension of grace is activated by recognizing and applying certain keys and one of these laws that is responsible for the mysterious lifting of men is called the law of honor again let me tell you that the kingdom of god operates based on the law of seed time and harvest remember that as far as the earth remains seed time and harvest it wasn't necessarily talking about money that means everything you want is a harvest and that it will never come until you sow the seeds that produce it are we together listening is the seed for learning when you sow the seed of a listening ear you will get the harvest of information a question is the seed for an answer are we blessed hmm. knowledge is the seed for transformation when you want to be transformed the seed that you sow to your mind and your spirit is knowledge are we together yes productivity generally speaking and value are the seeds for financial rewards that means if you do not have a system that consistently brings you financial rewards it is because you did not sow the seed of value and productivity are we together now yes honor is a seed and the harvest it produces is access honor is the key that opens doors doors that multiply your influence doors that multiply your relevance the key that will open the door to the heart of a generation the key that will open the door to captains of industry honor write this down please all failures in life can be traced to dishonor all with no exception all failures in life can be traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles all failure without exception can be traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles what then is honor i want to be as simple as possible before we pray write this down please honor is the discerning the celebration and the rewarding of uniqueness of usefulness of excellence honor is the discerning it starts with discernment honor is the celebration honor is the rewarding of uniqueness of usefulness of excellence the fortitude to discern the fortitude to celebrate the fortitude to reward a person for his uniqueness for his value and for the excellence that is communicated is called honor are we together now so honor has to do with discernment you first have to discern uniqueness you have to discern value you have to discern excellence let's define this honor what then is this honor this honor is the trivializing of value of usefulness to dishonor means to trivialize value 
to trivialize usefulness to dishonor means to take for granted to dishonor means to lightly esteem are we still together first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 blessed be the name of the lord first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 ready wherefore the lord god of israel saith i said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord saith, be it far from me let's read the rest together for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me to dishonor means to trivialize to di to dishonor means to downplay importance please understand this this is the plague of africa this is the plague of many 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 people The Bible is full of men and women who rose to the top because they understood honor. And the Bible is full of men and women who fell from the top because of dishonor. Many examples, but we do not have all the time today. I will only take you to the book of Esther. The Bible starts by giving us an interesting story. The book of Esther is very interesting because there's no mention of a man of God. And the warrior in that book was a woman. Are we together? The book was not called the book of Ahasuerus. It's called the book of Esther. The Bible is named after two women in scripture. You know, two women found their place, two books in scripture are named after women and for the same reason, honor. Listen very carefully. You will now know why doors have refused to open or you will know why the door that opened yesterday is now closed today. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that there was once a man called Ahasuerus. Are we together? Esther chapter 1. And then the Bible tells us that this man, see, the Bible takes our time to meticulously flaunt his achievements. Scripture is not careful about this man's achievements, that he was a captain over about 127 provinces. Now, whoever can gain influence over 127 provinces deserves a round of applause. Because kings in those days, they didn't just get, it was not, you, you didn't just um, give them things by luck. They fought, they were warriors. They conquered territories to become kings here is this man called ahasuerus a king over 127 provinces then the bible says that there was this woman that sat by his side called vashti are we together now and then the bible said that it was the custom of kings in those days to flaunt their glory and then to flaunt their wives you know just as a way of um, showing the excellency of their kingdom and then at one time esther began to i mean um, vashti began to create her own cabinet and the king sent for esther i mean sent for vashti and vashti would not come and the king said wow she's forgotten that she was only queen because she married a king let me teach you something no matter how close you are to greatness never forget that you are standing before greatness no matter how close yes are we together now this is very very powerful this is why those who are close to great people never rise because by reason of interacting with greatness again and again the side effect is that dishonor can be sown i've seen him eating i mean we sleep on the same bed for husband and wife i mean you come to my restaurant all the time you are my boss i'm your secretary i watch you when you are in pain i watch you when you are awake and the door is not the man that closes the door is the law that closes the door 
the man may love you and desire that the door remains open but the door is closed please listen very carefully and then the king being a very good man shelved the issue but the elders came and said king you are in a position where whatever you do will be received and practiced all over the province this woman has communicated dishonor now look at this my god everything is in place in the palace but because of dishonor the kingdom is about to divide not because the treasures were missing not because the guards were not there look how dangerous dishonor is a palace is still in place but one woman's dishonor is about to wreck a kingdom and the elder said no way this woman will have to go as a deterrent to other women now it's not about gender i hope you understand the, the whole the idea Vashti never said sorry Vashti never begged it was proof that her dishonor was intentional there's no record in scripture of Vashti coming to the king and say I'm sorry I think I was I was just carried away we can't talk no she left and left with joy it was Vashti that strengthened the activity of her man in the palace you would be learning if you study that book properly her man seemed to gain some level of ascendance and he became close to the king because of the ministry of this strange woman called Vashti now Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy in the palace listen carefully the book of Esther shows how to rise from anywhere to anywhere the Bible says listen to me it says that a call was made all through Shushan the entire province including Shushan and Mordecai sitting at the gate hears that the king is looking for a wife then he goes to fetch a little girl called Hadassah powerless but powerful she comes and stands with other people and he's teaching her if you can understand honor you will rise to any level now cut the long story short she becomes queen and while she's queen her man is plotting the annihilation of the jews are we together now that she was the only person who had access listen be careful when you dishonor those who have the access you need there are times you cannot get to the gate you will need the recommendation of the person already at the gate now listen carefully Esther comes to the king and does what he so craved for that Vashti refused to do her man is plotting to kill the Jews she would have walked to the king and she fasted and walks to the king and says oh king live forever he lifts the golden censer a risk she took and says queen what's the problem why are you at my inner chamber without me calling for you and she said oh king I'm only here because I am here to flaunt your glory I have contemplated on your excellence paraphrasing and I need to let the nations know I'm trying to put a celebration for you and the king says who is this who did I marry yet her reason was to command victory and she uses she does not come to say there is a friend you have called her man no the king would drive her away she uses honor and the king says put the feast he said may i request that her man also join that feast so honor can kill <laughs> honor is a dangerous weapon of mass destruction her man is in that feast and the king is so happy and blessed and then the king says do it again do it again my queen make that feast again you are recognizing and discerning what i represent i've always wanted to let people know that i was a great king and now do it again and then she did it again and the third time i'm rushing the book while all that is happening there's already a plot happening her man had collected the permission to destroy the jews 
and then the bible says she organized a feast called the feast of wines and the king drank and he was happy and then he says what do you want let me tell you it's a law that when people are kind to you and you do not respond you will be restless you see that that the moment people communicate certain dimensions of benevolence and you ignore them and you do not say thank you you will not be at peace and the king had to say look what, what do you want you have to tell me something it can't be indefinite that you're doing all this thing to me and she said well king there is a threat in this kingdom who threatens a woman who has vowed to bring me honor and she said do you really want me to tell you that person say it says her man and the king was touched a wise king because wise men don't act swiftly I mean they don't act carelessly he went to the garden to think and while he was there you see eh, when God is against you anything will fight you yeah. her man is on his knees finally to beg the queen and then the king comes and sees her in a position that looks like she was trying he was trying to rape her and said not only have you dishonored me you still now want to and he said look go and hang this man honor hung her man honor lifted Mordecai Mordecai saved the king it was recorded but he was not rewarded and one night just like it will happen to someone here that the book of remembrance was opened and he said what shall be done to a man you raise many people in your life who now act as though you did not raise them I, listen let me tell you this it's a big mistake there are many parents here you raise people who were not your children and today they act as though your contribution to their lives were just one of the many things be patient the justice system of God will fish you out for honor there are many pastors across Africa who have labored over people raised them mentored them built them and now the people get, they get built and they act as though nothing ever happened to them dishonor is dangerous there are many ceos who raised and mentored many young people some of them came as cleaners and they were privy to conversations that began to culture their understanding and now they had become great people and they come to the man and oh, i'm a ceo you are a ceo hi how are you dishonor is dangerous Are we blessed so honor is the discerning celebrating the rewarding of uniqueness you have to understand this that every door that closes closed because of this honor when I came to this ministry the first thing that touched me was the understanding of honor right from the protocol right from the airport i said no apostle felix is an excellent man he has taught his people well they understand honor listen have you seen preachers who go to certain places and it's as though they were not anointed this honor closed that door including Jesus he went to certain cities and could not do anything because they said is this not a carpenter's son the Bible says he that receives a prophet that means a prophet is not only a prophet a prophet is many things a prophet is a brother to family members a prophet is an uncle to certain people a prophet may be a businessman are we together but that men are dimensional and the the dimension you honor is the dimension that supplies whatever grace for instance if I am a CEO and I am a man of God and I am a brother if you honor the CEO you will get contracts you will not get the anointing the CEO is not the one who releases graces I will give you wisdom if you honor the brother 
what you are going to get is information about the state of the family that's a brother's reward that men are multi-dimensional and you must discern what they represent Elijah had sons of the prophet the next prophet should come out of them because they were in the school of the prophet but they were already used to him and I'm sure they were offended by his temperament and then a young farmer who had no business being a prophet sees this man and discerns this is not an ordinary man do you know the kind of temper Elijah had and Elisha said if you like be as temperous as was ever I will follow patiently it takes a lot to receive impartation it takes more than kneeling down it takes more than dropping a seed oh no you can kneel down and yet you are standing up you can speak good and yet it is not true are you getting what i'm saying i have watched this destroy businesses and ministries across africa dishonor the trivializing of the investment of the spirit upon people there are many people today who cannot rise in business because every businessman is their colleague a man tells you that he came to south africa having nothing and in five years he's now the ceo of a company with branches everywhere does that sound ordinary to you does that sound normal to you why trivialize it then what is the big deal we say what is there in being a ceo i can be a ceo and the door closes there are many men of god who listen to the tapes of other men of god in secret and never receive anything because the door of honor was already closed please hear what i'm telling you this honor is dangerous is a law that has transited me from one level even to the other honor to God honor to men honor to principles the first time God gave me this revelation was in 2012 or 13 and I preached a message called commanding results that message blessed the body of Christ I found the key that was responsible for the retrogression of people I will never see greatness and ignore it no no oh this man is a CEO he owns businesses in the US this that oh God bless you sir it's an honor to meet you that you don't sit and say what is there you're a man I'm a man that foolishness you will spend your lifetime paying for it hallelujah every time you find a people a person who can do what you cannot do sustain the discernment to see listen to me very carefully there are people today apostle who cannot raise two children and yet there is one mama somewhere in South Africa with 11 children and all of them are responsible there is a grace there she may not be educated but there is a grace you can honor your way to family stability please sit down let me teach you something consistency is proof that you are not working by mistake you 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 cannot be consistent in anything in business in ministry by mistake nobody wins the olympic by mistake you can run by mistake but you don't win by mistake how many people desire certain graces and certain anointings and yet they act as if it is not important how many people desire certain levels of wisdom and yet they see a man's book and say oh he's written another book i hope what is there is really sound and the person who is talking has not gone anywhere at all 
it, it's as though there is an addiction to trivialize people in Africa now listen and I'm saying this respectfully I hope you understand let me tell you this and it is not necessarily because we are bad people it is not necessarily because we are evil people is the side effect let me teach you something about success because you see success is based on laws and it's very difficult to be sustainably successful and most people will find comfort giving excuses sometimes justifiably so so the moment you become successful you judge the excuses that people have and so naturally there will be a side effect and the only comfort and succor they can find is to downplay your relevance they don't do it because they hate you they do it to at least manage their frustration the reason why the brothers of joseph hated him was because he was the only one who had a dream if they all had dreams they will be colleagues dreamers on their way <laughs> the disciples kept looking at james and john and saw the way they were close to jesus and then one day the mother of james and john came to lobby a position for her sons i mean don't blame the woman any responsible woman seeing a visionary man will want to create space and then the disciples heard it and they said finally you see you see what we've been saying that these guys were here together laboring together whereas they are going <laughs> behind to just lobby a position and jesus looked at them and said the positions are vacant but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism listen every great man in this room every great man in this church every great man in this nation paid a price that only few people will ever imagine the price of diligence the price of of prayer the price of tears people lost millions of runs to learn the lessons they give cheaply there are ceos that failed and failed and failed and failed again until there was nowhere to go and and they started learning by themselves people rose unassisted the systems were against them the structures were against them they prayed they fought and now god had honored them and here comes someone who casually says what is there and the door closes there are people who trivialize god and the door of his help and mercy closes who is God they say what is God they say and they equate God to money they equate God to education dishonor there are those who trivialize men listen let me tell you this we are all equal in Christ but we are not equal in grace it's, a, it's an uncomfortable truth and it's not meant to create some kind of a false sense of superiority one above another but I am saying that we are equal in Christ watch this but the sacrifice of alignment are we together now and our our different levels of press into the things of the spirit has separated us into spiritual cadres with different dimensions and levels of possibilities there's one person in South Africa in this church whose signature can answer your prayer of 10 years. Why have they not blessed you? Listen, challenges are not generic. There are people who have conquered that realm. It is true. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never dishonor platforms. I will never dishonor men of God. I place value on people. It's a mistake that we have made even as men of God. So when I come and you all clap for me, you all celebrate me, I've been touched by how much you love and honor me, but I must reciprocate it. I know you honor me, but there are things you have that I do not have. I must discern it. I don't need to ask you for it my honoring you will allow the grace to come upon me so i listen i will be the most foolish preacher that has stood on this platform if i leave empty no i give you what i have 
but I live full too. Hmm. Jesus looks at little children and sees a level of sincerity he wants in children that adults don't have and he says let the little children come to me the adults will say no 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 you are busy you are too he said let them come for such let me use them to teach adults a lesson that until you maintain this kind of posture you are not ready to do business with god wise men learn from everything they learn from animals please hear what i'm telling you it may be the reason why your company is grounded you can sit down for one hour through honor and someone will share with you his pain of 20 years and in two months the turnover of your corporation will shock you this honor can peg a man for many years hallelujah hallelujah are we blessed when your dear people coordinating the service when they stand here and honor your man and your woman of god i'm sure that many of you just think it's a ritual must they honor them are we not i mean do we dishonor them i mean you should know that let's let's please continue the service quickly and let apostle carry the mic and start teaching you see let me tell you what that does no matter what prayer comes here it will not work for you There is a law of reception you must discern who is this man who is this woman not in the flesh what grace brought this result is it common should I trivialize it and you come to a conclusion based on intelligent contemplation that there must be an ability at work in this man and his wife that is not common and you submit to that understanding and the portals of their grace opens up to you even if they don't speak over your life right there in your room you will find out that you begin to reproduce possibilities listen there are people who i have never met physically but the depth of honor they have for me they have almost reproduced the grace of god upon my life right there in their rooms did you know that i listen to my own teachings every day and when i listen to my own teachings when apostle joshua selman is about to pray i don't stand and say i'm hearing myself i say lord as this man is praying i receive listen sit down let me teach you something do you know why many men of God are not blessed by their own grace? Because the anointing, hear me, honor is not human worship. I, there's a lot of nonsense going on. That's not what I'm talking about. Please don't confuse what we are dealing with here. Not just human worship. No, 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 no. A recognition. The grace that comes on a man as touching his office is for everybody, including him, if he will submit to it so you can be dying and yet giving life until you discern that that grace when i listen to my teachings believe me i don't listen and repeat myself i listen with an open heart and i hear what i did not hear even while i was preaching listen how many husbands come two people any two well don't carry anybody's wife please husband a, a a man and a woman or husband and wife don't don't come here with anybody's wife husband and wife come stand here stand here god bless you watch this do you know real value is not physical and that if i give you watch this can i bring that to you now watch this everybody this is your rand if i give you some money hold this give some to your wife if i give all to your wife <laughs> take this now watch this if you have physical money people say you are rich or you are blessed that's not true this is giving evidence to what is on you are you getting what i'm saying now human god stores his possibilities in men 
learn what i want to teach you there is no man that is empty there are human beings carrying mysteries that they themselves do not know now listen carefully this woman can carry favor that came from the blessings of her grandfather he did business with god and god covenanted that all your children they will multiply now she does not even know sit down let me teach you something that's why i said honor starts with discernment here comes this man he marries this woman and he does not know why he starts to rise even her she does not know why someone just starts a relationship with you and in two weeks he got a job and he says you're a good woman oh you too you say you are you don't know that something on you please listen to me hmm. i share with you the mysteries of the kingdom now this man is rising and he's doing well and do you know that although she's his wife she still has that spiritual component that represents an advantage a day can come in his life this man you see may love her as his wife but dishonor her as touching the grace god gave her when it has to do with that grace he will go down although they are married although they are having children together it will take the man now to say look you are my wife but i've discerned your dreams every time you have a dream it gives me direction the last 10 years of my life was correct because of your dream please i submit to that grace i am your husband but dream again now watch this this woman can be broke this man can be broke yet every prophetic word is increasing the members in his church because they have not submitted to that grace the day the woman says i know you are my husband let me tell you a story it's a true story many of you have heard it in my teachings a man of god's family was going down financially whereas he was blessing members testimonies people were coming with all kinds of testimonies one day just like a service like this imagine that your, the service is going on and then first lady just gets up and walks out of this place you know people will talk and say we hope things are fine she left and went home after the service he counseled quickly and rushed back home my wife what is wrong did i offend you she didn't say a word he just sat down at table to eat and he noticed she was bringing his meal did i offend you we can talk about this i mean what we've been married for a long time let's not get into all of this and she wouldn't say a word she served him and he noticed the plates women you know those plates you, yeah she brought it out oh. and she served the man and then she came dropped his bottle of water and got down and said servant of God my family is in need of a breakthrough listen the husband looked at her he said suddenly that same anointing he felt in church that refuses to come home because of dishonor that same anointing and he stretched his hand and spoke and God opened that family listen hear me listen there are many pastors whose relatives have never benefited from that grace because to them he's a brother or a sister listen to me only god knows what this man carries only god knows what this woman carries the day you discern what she carries you will carry the grace the day you discern what he carries the law of honor listen listen to me Two people can be even in the same room. There are people in South Africa who will never go out of a job for more than six months. There is a grace on them that they cannot even explain why. Someone must lose his job for them to be there. The grace does not allow them to be without it. Now, if you begin to see that kind of result, 
you should know even if the carrier does not know and here you are his roommate or flatmate and every time you see people calling him do you want a job and you are there praying hoping and nothing is working one night you can look at him and say look you are my friend we grew up from the same street but today I do not want to talk to my friend I want to talk to the career of that grace right there although you are friends he can even say casually God bless you and that's it the door is open are you hearing what I'm saying now so this couple you can find out just an example maybe these ones have just one or two children and it's difficult for them to train the children stubborn children you say left they go right you say sleep they jump up you know all kinds of things trouble and headache that they give you and here is a family with 12 children all of them are obedient godly the first child is a pastor second child a ceo third child a doctor fourth child a professor there is a grace now listen very carefully if this man and this woman even though they are friends if they discern one night they can visit them and they just see them carrying something a hamper say how are you let's eat and when they are done eating can say look I came here with my wife because I have watched you for 25 years you have never quarreled with your wife all your children look like princes we have come to receive that grace so that where we failed our children will not fail listen just for that honor even if these people say no 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 we will not pray it's too late it has come already Watch this. Come, Colin, come, quickly, come. Many of you are... Just come, shoes or no shoes, just, just... Watch this. Many of you are in the music ministry. Many of you are trusting God for open doors. Many of you want the nation of South Africa to accept and receive your grace. But here is a man, look at the song. I'm not South African, but when I heard the song, I said, I must play this song in my car for a while I, until I learn it by, by repetition. I mean, that song blessed me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yesterday before the release, was it yesterday or day before yesterday? He came while we we're having dinner and he came and knelt down and gave me a few of the CDs and said to pray and bless him before he would launch it. That is honor listen now I spoke to his I spoke over his album I said I give it wings in the spirit let it go far now please listen I prayed for him together with his father tomorrow you will hear that this man is sharing the stage with certain people and other people will say he was just lucky that's what we say are you seeing now someone in this crowd someone watching is praying and fasting and saying oh god when will the nations hear my songs why don't i receive songs let me tell you you can package a seed and drop it and still not receive anything it starts with discernment what came on this man that brings him songs in the night I've been trying to compose a song you will say for one year I've not finished it stanza one I'm still there I've, I've been I've, the revelations don't add up and I had to just close the book and here comes a man he's, he's brought an album you can come with honor and say look Colin I love you I know we are friends we laugh around we're all workers but I am not sowing to you as a person I submit to the grace that gave you this influence 
he may just laugh and just say god bless you but you will be surprised that night as you go to sleep you will watch yourself on stage singing songs and get up and that becomes the song everyone will sing in south africa cheap victories that pride and dishonor stops people from stepping into praise the lord and even as i'm standing i'm saying it again and truly i prophesy to you from the depth of my heart not only the nation of south africa the globe will hear your voice in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you thank you the question i want to ask you now who have you dishonored that is responsible for your stagnation what principle whose company do you pass every day and just laugh and say can you imagine this man he doesn't even speak english and yet he has 500 staff that should even make you wonder why a man cannot speak a south african language cannot even speak english and yet he had 500 staff what grace brought them are we blessed when i learned this principle my life changed my life changed completely because i am i am like a spiritual archaeologist i search and discern graces genuine graces i sat down to eat with your your dear man of god and his wife and i looked at the the beauty the glory of her heart i said lord it is not i i must ship this grace so that all the women I know in our ministries will reflect this grace. Yeah. Now, listen, you can be in this church for 10 years and not carry the grace. And a stranger will come in one day. That's why strangers are the most blessed in many churches. Because before they arrive there, they come with hunger. They come with a depth of recognition. When I traveled, like some of your, some of you here who came, maybe guests and members, some of you have been uh, to our ministry. I think I spotted one or two of, of them somewhere. And the sheer sacrifice, it is honor. Your man of God was not always this way. A day came, a grace came on him. Do you recognize it? It is true that many men of God have stood on this platform. But what dimension of their grace have you received? Or was it just a ritual? It's amazing how many people have rubbed shoulders with graces and yet nothing came on them. Oh, I was the one who served Benihin food. I was the one who served this one food. In fact, I did a high five with him and you are still like this? <laughs> We are going to pray. I thank God for what he has made out of my life. But I do not trivialize people. And that includes you. Yes. It is the reason why I appreciate you when I stand here. It's not just a ritual to preach. I do not know what is sitting down there i do not know what grace there are some of you because of certain covenants that your loved ones had with god god vowed that you will never beg even when you are not giving you usually should beg but the covenant covers you it's a grace <laughs> Some of you, this has run away from you continually. No matter what you do, no matter how you call it. Find out the person it is running to. And honor that person. 
because everything runs from somewhere to somewhere once upon a time this thing will not come to me you cry you call it it will refuse listen when I got to this point in my life I said no things have to change I remember a great man of God I carried a seed and I traveled down and when I sowed that seed please listen um, if, well you may you may just hold on we'll, we'll allow a time for that except you're just sowing here but please just so that you don't waylay the man of God and his wife but I'm showing you a powerful principle when I sowed that seed I came out and the Holy Ghost told me put your hands on the floor right there and he says from this day you have entered the overflow anointing when I tell you I'm a product of many anointings even though I have seen Jesus even though I live in the realm of encounters it still was not an excuse to dishonor the body the reason why the doors of nations open is because I will never stand on anybody's pulpit and trivialize their grace and trivialize the people who are there no matter how you honor me I will honor you back someone after service right now you need to run back home and go to your mother and say mama you raised us without education that grace let it come on me i'm tired of loitering around as a master's holder with no open doors and mama will say what happened you say i came to excel 2020 i learned a mystery this is why doors have not opened it is not only your man of god that you should honor alone as important as it is you may need to turn to your friend and say we are workers in the same unit but i have noticed every time they want to give an appointment it is you there is a grace can i take you out for lunch just to honor that grace listen to me there are people who desire this grace and yes this anointing you see but then they will trivialize it what is there i think he's just lucky to be anointed if i tell you the story of my life and the sacrifices that this grace sits upon you may weep in this place behind every glory truly there is a story When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made And we're rising here only because you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible so we stand in here listen South Africa 
believe me this mystery will open you doors some of you tomorrow you will not go to work just with your fire you will carry a bottle of wine and knock on the office of your CEO and says why are you here he says sir just just spare me a minute I just want to thank you for giving me a job I have discerned the wisdom I went to church on Sunday and I was taught that honor is the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of uniqueness you are a blessed man I have seen you close deals and this is a token of my honor for you you do that I guarantee you it will not take one month you will fly as though you were in a lift Listen, something interesting happened. I, I was having a domestic flight to Lagos, then to connect to come. And while I was in that flight, the, the cabin crew, you know, the, the, the hostess, she looked at me and said, ah, Apostle, I mean, I'm the one serving you. And then she was happy. And while she served, she told the pilot that Apostle was in the plane. And then, you know, in the air, he now decided to embarrass me and you know just just made that public i was just trying to hide and come then he now just said i said ah you know shout out to this 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 and oh i said oh god no don't do this to me now and then while he did that i began to rejoice myself because i said this man will never be the same now truly i may not have to see him honor is powerful it works like a charm this is my final session and then I leave but I do not want to leave you the way you are now listen this is what I want you to do in the next 10 minutes watch this you are going to aside from the pastor you are going to walk around this entire place and look for someone and just appreciate him I don't know who you are and what you carry but I love and I celebrate that grace in doing this many of you will be receiving impartations that you you don't have to fall down god bless you may god i appreciate you i appreciate you and while that is happening as you are mixing a grace your destiny needs that is at the back you just hold that grace into your life shake that grace into your life are you ready to do this with understanding and prophetically rise up walk around meet someone you don't have to know the person celebrate the person no don't come to me don't come to me and don't come to pastor and his wife you made a way open doors I tap into the grace upon your life one more minute and you are back to your seat you are celebrating someone for the investment of God's grace upon their lives. No jealousy, no fighting, no competition. I tap into that grace with understanding.
Hallelujah. Please return to your seat. Return to your seat. It's time to pray. Your life is about to change. Believe me. Now, please return to your seat. We're about to pray. That song you sang, there is a part of it that I want him to sing again. Your new album, your song. And whilst you sing that song, the moment you're done, I'm going to pray. This is my last session. Please be patient. Someone's life is changing. People are, people are crying all over this place. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's a new season. These are the laws of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I don't know why God allowed both of you to come out, but you will never be the same. Never be the same. I speak over your life. I speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life. I speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. You step into a new season. I open new doors for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Go ahead. Now you join him to sing this song just for two to five minutes. South Africa, lift your voice and celebrate victory. Listen, I want to pray for the sick now before the final impartation. You're sick in your body. You're trusting God for a miracle. Please lay your hands there. Lay your hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit is mighty in this place. Please lay your hands there. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just place your hand on your chest. Please. Let's, let's minimize movements so that I can minister to you. The power of God is about to touch you now. Now listen, this is what will happen. We'll be very fast. We have just maybe five minutes for this. As soon as I pray for you, many of you are already getting healed. The power of God is going to touch you right there. And the moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to check yourself. And the moment you find out that a miracle has happened, I want you to run out maybe here or here wherever. And then please let me have one or two officials they will just check on you and then we'll have a few testimonies we have to announce to principalities and powers here at excel 2020 that jesus the christ of god is still lord hallelujah something is happening i want to pray now in the name of jesus christ my god such a strong anointing the symbol for me just the symbol for right now every devil of infirmity ah, such an anointing here every devil of infirmity 
by the power of the Holy Ghost I command come out of everyone that is sick now in the name of Jesus come on South Africa in the name of Jesus right now I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost the healing anointing is touching you now be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus my God my God from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed right now the Lord is healing an abdominal condition this is what I'm seeing the power of the Holy Ghost someone having an abdominal it looks like a growth or something it disappears right now in the name of Jesus there's someone you have a pain along please help them the power of God is touching them um, there's a pain along your, your limb here the anointing of the Spirit is touching you right now in the name of Jesus pain around your 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 shoulder the power of God is touching you right now touching you right now touching you right now touching you right now someone you don't hear well the power of God is touching you now I command that deaf ear to open in the name of Jesus if you are here on your own crutches lift that crutch now lift that crutch now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there's there's someone hold on please I'm seeing I'm seeing um, like a lump just a lump around a, a, a breast lump right now it dissolves in the name of Jesus Christ um, I'm seeing someone with a condition around your throat this you continue to cough out sputum indefinitely the Lord is touching you right now wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Parousia salakaduziada heaviness heaviness around your body in the name of Jesus be healed right now be healed right now I'm seeing someone you are so weak you can't stand for long the moment you begin to feel dizzy you begin to feel nauseated in the name of Jesus the power of the Holy Ghost is is touching you there's someone you don't it's like you don't smell or I don't know something affected your smelling let it be restored right now my God the power of God is touching people here in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not following online and here in this building be healed in the name of Jesus 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 eye conditions be healed blood conditions be healed in the mighty name of Jesus now Hallelujah. Listen. What is upon us is what controls what is around us. You have tabernacled for days. Many of you have traveled from far. You have made sacrifices. It's time to receive. Just sing that song softly for me one more time. I want to pray and release something upon your life. The other part of the song. In the name of Jesus the son of the living God I declare right now the grace that makes things work my God I'm seeing fire all over the grace is called the grace for performance Maris Kolitalia Aparuzakata at the count of three from my left to my right the front to the back Blessed is she that believes the Bible says, for unto her there shall be a performance. Take that grace. One, two, 
three take that grace now take that grace now accomplish help help first lady take that grace things you couldn't do i release that grace i impart 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 that grace in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah listen to me there is a grace for influence because thou has loved righteousness and hated wickedness the bible says therefore god even thy god hath anointed you with the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows i pray for someone here in the name of jesus the grace that distinguishes you from the crowd makatos kalibarata take that grace now take that grace now take that anointing now help them please help them please take that anointing be distinguished i place grace upon you a mark of excellence a mark of excellence be distinguished said there is a spirit in man anywho and the breath of the almighty i want to release the spirit of revelation on someone access illumination to the depth of scripture at the count of three in no small way let it rest matasiata reketekete one two three step into that grace illumination revelation light step into that dimension i open up scripture i open up scripture in the name of jesus here lift your hands it's time for your business to step into a dimension please believe me the bible says believe the lord your god so shall you be established he said believe his prophets you're in business lift your hands i don't care what is happening or not happening believe i want to release grace upon your business in the name of jesus i open the two lift gates of south africa johannesburg over your business step into a realm of strange exploits step into a realm of strange exploits i bless your products and your services i give them wings they go beyond the borders of this city they go beyond the borders of this city in the name of jesus christ please place your hand down i want to pray for you listen the bible says we're wrapping up it says hagar was crying because she was in a desert land and there was no water and then the young lad ishmael was also crying and then the bible says the lord heard the voice of the young lad and the moment he spoke with hagar she looked and saw an oasis of water that means until god opens your eyes the answer is there but you may not see it i pray for you wherever your answer is hiding in the name of jesus excel 2020 i open your eyes to see i open your eyes to see where your solutions are i hope help them please i open your eyes to see in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah excellence is a spirit it's not just a culture there is a spirit of excellence it says oh lord my god how excellent is your name your name is not just great it excels excellence is like the rising of the sun you never have a better yesterday when that spirit is upon you i pray for you your 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 apostle is an excellent man 
and I stand in agreement with the grace that is upon his life house of treasures South Africa take the grace for excellence in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ and finally let me call your destiny help us into your life listen no destiny helper comes on their own they are called by prophecy these are the ordinances of the kingdom they can pass you every day and yet not attend to you was it not the bones were all there in the valley but they could not come together but they were there just because you could not see them and if those bones are your client you may remain there it took prophecy and bones began to be joined to bones just because you don't see it does not mean it's not around I prophesy to the north of South Africa to the south of South Africa the east of South Africa the west of South Africa everybody who must show up in your destiny your business your church to hold your hands and lift you I command their ministry over your life in the name of Jesus receive the ministry of destiny help us in the mighty name of Jesus hear me destiny help us are men ordained anointed and commissioned to lift your hands they will lift you with no strings attached one more time i call them into your hands call them into your life in the name of jesus christ for everyone who attended this excel conference in the name of jesus by this time next year return 10 times better spiritually 10 times better financially 10 times better Hallelujah. praise the name of the lord the apostles they came and they said they were caught to the heart the people said on the day of pentecost and he said men and brethren what shall we do and say repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children and children's children as many as are far off even to those that the lord will call you are seated here you are following online and you're saying apostle before you leave south africa it will be my joy to completely receive the life of god to end my life and begin his life in me and you are here you are saying I, i've given my life to christ but for some reason things just went haywire and i really truly want to make it right with god we have just one minute wherever you are leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain come stand in front here i want to pray for you i'm only going to count three or four and then you come don't wait for someone to be the first one let's celebrate them as they come south africa let's honor salvation run don't be ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of apostle i want to come but i'm ashamed and afraid of my friends leave them and come quickly i think i'm born again but i'm not sure join them there's no such thing as not being sure there's something called the assurance of salvation join them join them Thank you, Mama. Thank you, all of you who are coming. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. This is why he put forth this meeting. Listen, let me tell you. No matter, you see, the house of God is like a hospital. Yes. You come as you are, but you don't stay as you are. You come as you are, and then you are changed. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you for coming. I love you from the depth of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for making that sacrifice. Now please lift your right hand and say this after me. Say it passionately, say it truthfully. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Today, I receive your life. I receive 
the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin the power of Satan the power of the flesh is broken over my life from today I move forward ever and backward never father we thank you for these ones you have drawn to yourself I declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and I declare in the name of Jesus that a no page is open for you you go forward ever and backward never I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit right now I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that he will guide you he will hold your hands and turn you into signs and wonders you are blessed you remain blessed in Jesus name I pray amen and amen okay how do someone direct me okay all of you please in concert this way just follow the precious lady waving her hands and she would lead you there'll be a group of people to just meet with you briefly let's celebrate them as they go all of you thank you thank you